when it's Georgia, Florida weekend, all roads, rivers, and bridges lead to the sold-out Gator Bowl. Fans very special and very social. Some in campers arrived as early as Wednesday night. The Florida-Georgia game is one of a handful of college football games that can legitimately be billed as a happening. It's been that since they began playing at this neutral site in this neutral city in 19... Today's game has added national significance. Undefeated Georgia is ranked number four in the nation. Once defeated Florida is ranked number nine. The Southeastern Conference title and major bowl bids are involved. For the coaches and players, it's a championship football game. For many fans, it's the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. There's something for everybody. Exciting college ball on sports. Following is an presentation of BS Sports. From the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, it's the Florida Gators versus the Georgia Bulldogs, sponsored by Mazda and the full line of sophisticated Mazda products, and by Apple Computers. At the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, it's Florida and Georgia. Hello, everybody. I'm Lindsey Nelson, and when the football folks talk about big games, this is what they're talking about. If there is a college football dynasty, it's probably the one right now at the University of Georgia. For the last three seasons, they have won three consecutive conference championships, a national championship, and over that span, they have lost only one conference game. On the other hand, the University of Florida Gators have never won a Southeastern Conference championship, and they need badly to win this one today to stay in the race for this year's title. They call this the war between the states, and the states are the ones that are bordering each other. They are very competitive, Georgia and Florida. Our analyst today is Jack Snow. And Jack, let's talk about these teams first. Everybody agrees that Wayne Pease, the Florida quarterback, is outstanding. There's no question that, Lindsay. He's a very good quarterback. He throws the ball very well. He's coming off a superb performance, individual performance, last week against Auburn. 29 of 41 for 330-some-odd yards and two touchdowns. They have got to have an outstanding day from Wayne to win today. Well, he's got some outstanding receivers. Well, there's no question of that. Dixon, Lang, Natiel, uh, they're a good group of receivers. They have great athletic ability. They will have to be able to read the Georgia defenses, get in the seams of the zones, uh, beat their men when they go man-to-man, -man and come up with the big catches. I guess the big story of this game the whole week has been Georgia's Terry Hogue. Terry Hogue is a question mark today. We still don't know whether he's going to play or not. He's a great competitor. He's an All-American. We'll just have to wait and see about Terry. Well, quarterback John Lastinger is going to play. Lastinger uh, doesn't have the credentials you might say that Wayne Pease does but he's a very consistent quarterback he's a great team leader he's a superb field general he runs the eye the power eye the option he does everything very well fundamentally he's a good good leader for Georgia so that just about sets it up Florida and Georgia it's going to be a noisy time all afternoon more than 80,000 fans here at the Gutter Bowl Stadium here come the Florida Gators The Georgia Bulldogs! And Coach Spencer, or rather Charlie Fell, that is, or Charlie Fell of Florida, and here comes Vince Dooley of Georgia. here on Florida Georgia weekend for the big battle and we'll be back here for the opening kickoff in just a moment. Experience Mazda. 
You might expect the Mazda GLC to be an exceptional economy car. Its interior is one of the roomiest in its class. Standard features include five-speed overdrive, split fold-down rear seats, even radial tires. You might also expect the front-wheel drive GLC to offer good value. But you might not expect performance like this. The more you look, the more you like. The Mazda Experience. Perhaps is the place. There's just no doubt about it. I think there's more flavor to it than other beers. I think Pabst is good beer. Pabst is the place. Your good friends all around you for the real taste of beer. And all the good times you have here. No, it's always going to taste good. That's what counts. For the real taste of beer, Pabst is the place. To some, the breakup of AT&T is a shattering event. But Merrill Lynch know-how can make it your lucky break. Our top-ranked research team studied AT&T from top to bottom. We can help you make the right move. Manage eight stocks, keep some, sell some, or move into our special AT&T stock fund. Now that opportunity is knocking, take advantage of a real break. Call Merrill Lynch a breed apart. The Smart Set, Zenith's Advanced System 3. Look inside and you'll find Zenith's exclusive computer brain. It helps make this the smartest Zenith color set ever. Look inside the Z100, Zenith's most sophisticated desktop computer, and you'll find Zenith design and component expertise there too. The Z100s are easy to use and expandable. Zenith desktop computers and Zenith color television. What they have in common is Zenith quality. It goes into everything we make. It's a near-perfect afternoon here in Jacksonville. Temperature 73 degrees, humidity 63 percent. The wind is not a factor, five miles per hour. And the forecast is for sunny weather. Here are the officials assigned here for the Southeastern Conference. Robert Allier is the referee, and that is his crew. Robert Allier refereed this game, the Georgia-Florida game, last year. The toss was won. The toss was won by Georgia. They waved it off so that Florida elected to receive. It'll be Florida receiving, Georgia kicking off, which means that starting second half play, Georgia has the choice then. Final huddles with coaches before the teams come onto the field. Georgia on this, the near side, as you look at the field. It is natural grass, natural turf here at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, where this game has been played annually since 1933 with the exception of 1943, which was a World War II year in which Florida did not field the football team. In the last five meetings of these teams, Georgia has been the winner. A string that Florida is trying to break, of course. Florida wants this game, and they got to have it. They can't afford to lose this one with the way things are shaping up in the SEC. Lorenzo Hampton, right to Sibold, dropping back deep. Hampton is number seven, Sibold is number 25. And Kevin Butler is seeing the ball up to kick it off. On the 40-yard line, he is number five, the placement man for Georgia. Both teams have had a full week's work here getting ready for this game. Jack Snow and I were in Gainesville on Wednesday, or rather we were in Athens on Wednesday. We were in Gainesville on Thursday. Came here yesterday, as did both the teams. It has long since been a sellout. More than 80,000 fans here this afternoon. That is Butler waiting for Robert Allier's sign, and here he comes. It will not be run out. It's a touchback. Sibold decided to down it. It'll be first and 10 at the 20-yard line. All right, Lindsey, we're looking today for Wayne Peace to throw the ball. He's going to throw to his receiving core. They're, they're an excellent group of kids, as we mentioned at the start of the show. Georgia, what they're going to have to do defensively, they're going to have to try and keep Florida in a second down and long situation, that second six plus, so they can play them good tough zone defense. Wayne Pierce, number 15, has completed 62.9% of his passes so far this year. Short drop. And he hits Dixon. And Dixon moves it up to the 30-yard line for a first down on the first play of the ball game. Wayne Dixon stopped by John Little 
who is playing the rover post, normally played by Terry Hogue, who has not started the ball game. Defensive line. Calvin Rupp did an excellent one. The Culpepper's excellent. Tommy Thurston's a guy in the middle. He'll be calling the signals. This is his fourth game here in the Gator Bowl. Jones, Flack, Little, and Dean are like exceptional corners and safeties for Georgia. There's no tight end there. There are three wide receivers, and here is a pitch to Hampton, and Hampton gets up across the 30 and down to the 34-yard line. Second down and six yards to go at the 34. As the Florida Gators of Charlie Pell have opened up here with three wide receivers, Walter Odom, normally the starting tight end, is not in the ballgame. Ricky Natil is in in his place. Three wide receivers in there for Florida. Dixon's in the wide left. Lang is in the wide right. Peace. It's Hampton. First down at the 50 and across into Georgia territory. Still going as Hampton. Picks up a blocker. And down to the 15-yard line. First and 10 for the Florida Gators at the Georgia 15. Darrell Jones made the stop. Florida's doing. They're coming out with the three wide receivers to throw off the secondary coverage of Georgia and make them mix up. Just a little out pattern here. Peace finds him. He's wide open. Here he goes. Look at Hampton. He's going to make a good move there. He gets upfield. Now you're going to see him try and set up his blocker. He's going to come in behind his offense. Number two. There he is, Lang. He wants Lang to throw a block. <laughs> quickly, Georgia, Georgia gets Gary Cantrell in there in that secondary. First and ten for Florida at the Georgia 15 yard line. He's just throwing and overthrowing Mateo. Ricky Mateo, number 89, starting in there in place of the tight end. Darrell Jones covering number 17. Second down, 10 yards to go at the 15-yard line. What they want to do, Lindsay, is they want to get Mateo, who is now the slot man in that three wide receiver offense. They want to put him in a one-on-one -on -one situation with the linebacker from Georgia. They think, they meaning Florida, believes that Mateo can beat that linebacker in a man-to-man -man situation. So it'll be interesting to th see through the course of the game how well Mateo will do. Peace has thrown for 10 touchdowns this year, had eight interceptions. They'll keep the three wide receivers in there. Second down, 10 yards to go at the 15-yard line. And it's completed in the field. He's at the 10-yard line, goes out of bounds at the nine. It was Charlie Dean, the safety, who ran him out. Take a picture, take a look at the teal now. He's a good one. He's got good speed. There he is in the slot. He's going to run just a little out, little bend out pattern. What happened is the linebacker jumped inside to free him up. The outside man came in on a slant, picked the, the safety, which allows the teal to be where he's at to catch the ball and turn up field. And brings up a third down and four yards to go at the nine. Third and four at the nine for the Florida Gators again, having just begun here at the Gator Bowl. He's going. Fitted in the teal, and the teal is down to the one yard line. Ricky in the teal. Got it down there to the one yard line, and he was hit by Andre Holmes. It's interesting to watch the teal here. He's a slot man. Peace is going to look. They're going to They're zoning the outside man. There's in the teal. But there he goes. He's trying to get in. Comes up a little bit short. Good tackle over there by Tony Flack, number eight. First and goal at the one-yard line. And they like many times to use John L. Williams in a situation like this. He is number 22 in there with Hampton at the moment. John L. Williams still struggling. Had he been whistled dead before he went across? I think he had. He had been whistled dead and stopped before he went across. He was still struggling and got in, but the play had been stopped. Got the receiver and field in motion here. Now watch Janelle Williams. He gets in here. He keeps driving. The good thing about Williams is he's a strong guy. He's got a lot of strength in his thighs. Watch him. Right there, the official says he's forward motion to stop. That's why they're going to blow it there. But he keeps on driving. Great individual effort. Excellent job by the fullback. Second down. Goal to go about a half yard away. Hampton. No sign. And so Hampton made the dive, but no sign. He did not get in. Mike Weaver was submarining and got to him there. Hampton does a smart thing. He just gets in position and tries to go up over the stack. All he wants to do is have that ball cross the plane of the end zone, the goal line, and it'll be a touchdown. Good job, though, by the Georgia Bulldogs defense. Third down and goal to go inches away. Third and goal. It is still Lorenzo Hampton, number seven, and John L. Williams, number 22, the setback. And 
they try once again and do not get it in there. Brady Gilbert was the man who got there that time and got the football, I think. However, there's a penalty marker on the play. Illegal procedure. Illegal procedure is the call, and it is against Florida. Let's see if we can pick it up here. Here comes the deal. Let's look for any movement along the offensive line. Or in it. There it is, right there. To, right there he goes, right there. Right now the ball's dead. Bump, they get a penalty, they got to go back 10 yards. Or at least five yards. Five yards. I'm sorry. Illegal procedure. Offense. Replay the down. Third down. And goal to go, and it's outside the five. Beast is going to throw here, Lindsay. He's got just enough room. He's got about 16 yards to work with in that passing game. Let's see what happens. He's got three wide receivers in there. Beast. And he's throwing to Mateel incomplete, making it fourth down. Fourth down. Vince Dooley, Georgia coach along the sideline, having seen his Bulldogs put up a tremendous goal line stand here. Florida move right down there, but then the Bulldogs turn them away, and it's fourth down coming up. And Bobby Raymond, the field goal man, is coming in. He's 11 for 13 so far this year. This will be a 22-yarder. Ray Criswell will hold for him. This will be a 22-yard attempt. 22-yarder, and it's good. The Florida is on the scoreboard with three points early. We have 11 minutes, 21 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. It is Florida three, and the Georgia Bulldogs nothing. There's a lot of low-priced trucks out there, but this one's the best truck value. Mazda V2000 Sundown. At $57.95, it's the only economy truck with a five-speed, steel-belted radials, tinted glass, and full carpeting, all standard, which also happens to make it the lowest-priced truck in America with all that standard equipment. Takes a lot. Takes a lot. Takes a lot. Mazda's got the best truck value for just $57.95. Some business people spend their time has very little to do with a clock. At Apple, we understand that business as usual isn't anymore. That's why we make the most advanced personal computers in the world. And why soon there'll be just two kinds of people. Hi. Those who use computers. Yeah, I'll be home for breakfast. And those who use apples. Saturday, they're dropping like flies. Anthony Andrews, Deborah Raffin, Pamela Bellwood, and Harry Morgan in Agatha Christie's sparkling cyanide. The deep men to receive are Daryl Jones, number 17, and Gary Moss, number 24, and to kick it off for Florida, number 16, Chris Perkins, a junior from Jupiter, Florida. That scoring drive was 75 yards in 10 plays, took 3 minutes and 39 seconds, and on the drive, Peace was 4 of 6 in the air for 75 yards. Picking off from the hash mark left. In the air. Jones is waiting. Three yards deep in the end zone. Goal line five. And out to the 10. And out to the 15. Stepped up as he came across there and got out to about the 16 yard line. Here we go. The Georgia offense, Lindsey. Last year is going to be the key to this game. He's going to have to run that option, the power option, with success, and the power eye option. Georgia is going to want to keep out of second and third down in long situations. That's second and six plus, third and seven plus, because they don't want to throw into the Florida defense because of the, of the pass rush. Last thing is completed 49.5% of his passes, four touchdowns, four interceptions. He's got the ball in the option. He's going to keep it. He likes to keep it. Last thing he likes to run the ball, and he gets it out to the 20 yard line for four. Defensive backs, Cleveland, Newton, or Lyon, tackles nose guard Newton. He's a good one. We'll keep our eye on him today. He, he's got to play in that middle pretty good, be very active. McAllister, Johnson, Marshall, and Corp. Marshall is an excellent linebacker. McKeever, Clark, Lillian, Vaughn, the deep backs. Excellent group of uh, defensive halfbacks. Ball is spotted at the 19 yard line. Second down play. Last thing of the quarterback. Motion across. Montgomery carrying and cut off at the pass. Stop back there at the 
22 yard line. Alonzo Johnson came across to make the tackle. Florida wants, they're going to try and keep, they would like to stop George's very first offensive play for no gain and force him into a passing situation because they think they can rush Lassen, who may get a little bit nervous behind the line of scrimmage. Kevin Harris, number 20, is in a wide right. It's third down and five yards to go. Our singer, there's a screen right. Taken out there by Archie, and Archie moves up near the 30-yard line. Boy, he's stopped by Fred McAllister, linebacker. It is a first and ten. It's at the 29-yard line. We'll see Lassinger through the course of the game. Now, he'll throw a lot of ball control passes. He'll do a little play action faking in there to try and hold the linebackers and step up and pop the outside men or the tight end, Clarence K. Harris has a wide left now, number 20, way out there. Young, the fullback, number 38, gets it down to the 32-yard line, picked up three yards on the play to make it second down and seven. Well, here's the final. Clemson 16, North Carolina 3. The Tar Heels, of course, sailed along until they lost last week to Maryland, and now they've lost consecutive games. And Clemson, on probation and ineligible to go to a bowl game, is uh, having a fine season. It's to the tailback. Montgomery stopped by Greg Cleveland. Cleveland makes the tackle of Montgomery. Here's Montgomery, a 6'1", 185 pounder. Four yard line. Third down, a long six on the 34. Third down and about five to go. Here's another situation where it's third and a passing down for Georgia. Let's see what Florida, if they can put a rush on. Wisham and Archie are the wide receivers. That's Archie in motion going all the way across. Last stinger on the option. He keeps it, trying to get to the sticks, and he's very close. He's trying to die for the first, and he may have got there. Last stinger likes to carry the football. The officials want to take a long look now. Watch Last stinger come down the line of scrimmage now. He's looking to see who's going to close. He's going to take that ball and turn up. He's going to do a lot of that. He may pick up a very important first down. He's going to continue to do that until they can stop him from, from turning up the field, turning the corner. Once they can stop him doing from doing that, then he will pitch the ball out and allow that tailback to try to get extra yardage. First and 10 at the 40-yard line. Well, the Georgia Bulldogs, Florida's leading 3-0. We're in the first quarter. That's Archie in motion, number 81, going all the way across. Last stinger with the football. And throw it. And it's intercepted, and it's going to be all the way down. To Vaughn, Bruce Vaughn. And Bruce Vaughn returns it deep into Georgia territory, where it'll be first down and 10 yards to go near the 15 yard line. Barry Young made the tackle. So the Gators, who have been here before earlier in the ballgame, are back again. Archie's coming across in motion. He runs just a short out. Vaughn, you watch him here. He gambles. He's watching last year. Comes up inside, makes a nice interception, and it's home free for, for Vaughn. There he goes. Nice cut back in here behind Lastinger. Trying to get in. Now Wayne Peace has them up there once again. Wayne Peace. And it's completed inside the 10-yard line. Taken in there by Lorenzo Hampton out of the backfield. Tackle was made by Gary Cantrell. It is at the 8-yard line. Second down and about three. Terry Hogue has not played in the ball game as yet. He did warm up. He's here. He dressed. He did participate in the pregame drill. That's Dooley, the head coach at Georgia. You saw along the sideline there in his 20th year as head coach of the Bulldogs. Outstanding career. He's throwing it into the end zone, and it's across the end line incomplete. It was Ricky Nathiel. Ricky Nathiel made the catch, but he was across the end line, and it's incomplete. He'll make it third down coming up. Three yards to go on the eighth. He's going to keep going in the now until they can stop that, until Georgia can stop that. Good game plan by the Gators. It is a leading by a score of three to nothing. This is a third down play. They held the ball at the Georgia eight yard line. Seven minutes, 20 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. Peace. Incomplete. 
Throw it, threw it to John L. Williams, sort of behind him on the far side. So that will bring the field goal man on again. That is Bobby Raymond, who had a 22-yarder earlier. So again, the Georgia defense holds and keeps the Gators away from the end zone. So they'll try to pick up three more. Criswell is holding. This will be a 25-yarder. He took the 22-yarder earlier. 25-yarder is good. And so a pass for the Florida Gators, and they lead it by a score of six to nothing with seven minutes, 10 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter of the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. Even from here, you know the Mazda 626 Sport Coupe is one high-performance road car. Inside, there's a six-way adjustable driver's seat, five-speed overdrive, and a serious cockpit. And while you may be impressed by its outstanding value, you'll be even more impressed by the front-wheel drive 626's outstanding performance. The more you look, the more you like. The Mazda Kendall Motor Oil protects engines from friction. To prove how well, we plated ordinary piston rings with pure gold and ran them inside this engine for 5,000 miles. Kendall friction fighters are better than car makers demand. But can Kendall protect even soft gold? Look, no visible wear. That's protection. Friction fighting Kendall Motor Oil for protection worth its weight in gold. Because they're fun, high school activities attract millions of participants every year. But high school activities also educate, helping boys and girls develop physically, mentally, and emotionally. The National Federation of State High School Associations urges you to support these activities. At the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, the Gators are leading Georgia by a score of 6 nothing in the first quarter. I'm Lindsey Nelson with Jack Snow, and here today we have a capacity crowd of 80,379 jammed into the stadium for this annual battle plate at a neutral site. Chris Perkins is going to kick it off now. He's teeing it up for Florida. Gary Moss is back along with Keith Montgomery. They've got Montgomery back there deep this time. The Georgia Bulldogs do. He's the tailback. And the boot. Cross field. And second by Montgomery. Up the sideline and he goes out of bounds after he crossed the 20. It's about the 22 yard line. Dastinger getting last-minute instructions now, going on to the field. Well, even though Florida has got six points on the board, they moved the ball down the field their first drive and only came away with three points when they had a chance to score. The second drive culminated in a field goal after a great interception. They've got to put some points on the board. First and 10 at the 22 for Georgia. Last thing of the quarterback. One back set here. That's Young, and he's got the pitch. Very Young. Drives across to the 26-yard line. Picks up four yards. It'll be second down and six. Mark Clark from Pasadena, California. Went to junior college there. He's from Canada Hills, actually. Came to make the tackle. Going the way that Dooley is, Coach Dooley, he's going to sit back. He's going to adhere to his game plan. He's not going to get rattled. He's going to keep things on the ground because that's where he's been successful in the past. And he's going to keep plugging along and, do, and, and maintain their game plan. Second down play. Can they get it to the fullback? Very young, and he drives it up there to the 35. And now to find out about Maryland and Auburn, let's go to New York and Brent Musburger. Lindsay, it's a wild shootout between Maryland and Auburn. The Terrapins had just gone ahead, and then Auburn drove the length of the field. This is their touchdown, the pitch. Bo Jackson, their All-American running back, takes it in. Auburn leads Maryland 21-17. They're early in the fourth quarter. Back to Lindsay. All right, Ben Musburger, we got the same kind of a football game right here. Georgia starting by six points. They've got the ball first down, 10 yards to go at the 35. Then the fullback. Gary Young has stopped at the 38-yard line. This time, Mark Korf again from his linebacker spot. Made the tackle again to three, makes it second down and seven yards to go. 
Georgia feels they can handle that uh, defensive line of Florida, so they're going to keep pounding at them. They're going to use those big linemen. They got Winfred Hood, number 78. Guy McIntyre, number 74. They're going to keep pounding away, give the ball to, uh, to their fullback and their tailback. Kevin Harris is far to the left side. Scott Williams is in motion over and back. Again, Barry Young, the fullback in the one-back set. He was popped as he crossed the 40-yard line. Got about three on the play, which will make it third down and four yards to go. Takes a pitch out right here from Lassinger. He cuts up field. I think he's going to really take a pow right there. What a shot. Boy, he gets nailed real good. Number 92 for Florida. Outstanding job. Melvin Ellison made the hit. Third down and four yards to go for the Georgia Bulldogs. Lassinger has got the ball. Gets it completed up to the 47-yard line. Pass complete to number 84. It is Clarence K at the tight end. And so they keep the drive alive with the first down and 10 yards to go. Vince Dooley along the sideline. It's first down, Georgia, at the 47. Back to the eye formation now. Last thing here, pumps one time. But to that long down the sideline, incomplete. As intended for Harris. Covering with Bruce Vaughn, the defender there. Second down, 10 yards to go at the 47 yard line for Georgia. Here comes Jamie Wisham back into the ball game, number six, wide receiver. Four minutes, 42 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Florida is leading by a score of six to nothing. Wisham is in a wide left. They've got Archie in a slot left. Last singer out to Archie. Archie's got it. Past the 50, 45 yard line. Not quite enough for the first down, but very close. Vito McKeever made the tackle. Archie does on that when they run from a slot. What Archie will do is he will be the slot man. He will run away from the line of scrimmage in a circle type, type action, and the outside receiver will actually come in and almost screen the defensive back. Last one gets that ball from center, stands up and pops it, hits, it, hits Herman Archie right away. He's a big guy and let him run with the ball. Third and two at the 44. Georgia now in Florida territory. Last thing with the ball, late pitch on the option, and Montgomery gets the first down and goes out of bounds. It's the first and ten for Georgia. Keith Montgomery took the late pitch. Tony Lilly came up to make the tackle. He's a good one. Yes, he is, Lindsay. Lilly's uh, you know, a good size guy, 6'1, 210 pounds. He's an excellent one. Jackson, no, take a look at that. I, I can't believe that. It's not over yet, but uh, that's a bad way for Jerry to be at the, in the first quarter, down 14 nothing. Well, it's only just begun, actually. It's in the first quarter. That's what I'm afraid of, Lindsay. First and 10 at the 39 yard line. Archie in motion all the way across. Last thing I handed it off. Very young, Carrot and Greg Cleveland coming to make the tackle as the ball moves to the 34 yard line. Second down and five. Excuse me, Lindsey Young is that ball, ball control type of runner. He's not a real nifty type guy, but I'll tell you, he'll hit and tackle the tackle or off tackle and give you everything he's got. He's averaging four and a half yards per carry. He's a very tough individual. He's out of the ball game just now. Scott Williams is requesting for the moment of fullback. It's the tail back in Montgomery, steps on the cut. Here's Montgomery trying to make the cut and slip down. Number 23. I thought it's the 37-yard line. Third down and about seven yards to go. Well, Georgia's in a situation they don't want to be in. Florida has Georgia in a situation that Florida wants them to be in. Let's see what happens now. It's going to be ball control passing. Very key guy is probably 84, Clarence K. He's a good intermediate receiver. We got Kevin Harris back into the ball game. Archie in motion all the way across. Passes to Archie on the screen right, and he was pushed back at the 34-yard line. Greg Cleveland, the defender who made the tackle. 34-yard line, short of the first down. 
So that will bring up a fourth down situation, fourth and five, with the ball at the 34-yard line. I don't quite understand that call. You, you know, you get your, your receivers got to get the first down yardage. You've got to get at least seven, eight yards or a yard or two beyond that first down stake and then catch the ball. They have a lot of faith in their kicker, evidently. Kevin Butler is going to attempt this one. He's a fine kicker. It's going to be a 51-yarder. Last year against Ole Miss, he had a 59-yarder. On the hash mark right, Kevin Butler with a 51-yard attempt. There is just 51 yards for Kevin Butler, and the Bulldogs are on the scoreboard. It's been so far a battle of field goals. And with one minute, 56 seconds left to play in the first quarter, the score is now Florida 6 and Georgia 3. I just got a sporty truck priced like some base trucks, the Mazda B2000 SE5. Look, it comes standard with a five-speed overdrive, steel-belted radials and spoker wheels, sporty stripes, a step bumper, even dual sport mirrors. Pretty sporty for just $59.95. Sakes alive, sakes alive, sakes alive. Only Mazda's got a sporty truck with a fifty nine ninety five. Next weekend, the Remsen Stakes, the 1983 World Figure Skating Champions, the World Cup Acrobatics Championship, plus John Madden's Journeys on CBS Sports Saturday. Sports Saturday returns next week with a series of outstanding events, including the Remsen Stakes, the 1983 World Figure Skating Championship, John Madden's Journeys, and World Cup Acrobatics Championship, all starting at 4 p.m. Eastern on CBS Sports. Butler, who just kicked the field goal, is not going to kick off. And he's got Lorenzo Hampton and Roger Sibol needs to receive it for the Florida Gators. We are very late now in the first quarter. The shadows are lengthening on a perfect day in Jacksonville, Florida. Well, Butler has a lot of legs underneath that one, almost into the crowd. Across the end line, touchback, of course, first and ten at the 20-yard line. Now, I understand why they did not send their receivers two yards past the first down stick the last series, because Butler can do such a fantastic job. Interesting on that field goal, he got that ball up in the air very quickly, which is unusual for a kick that long. Normally, when a kick goes 50 yards or so, it comes out of that with a little lower trajectory, but he got that ball up in the air real quick. What a very strong leg Butler has. Scoring drive was 12 plays, 44 yards, 5 minutes, 14 seconds. Wayne Peace, the quarterback for Florida. Peace guns it out to Dixon, and Dwayne Dixon, his favorite receiver, is at the 25-yard line. Picked up five yards on the pass play. Tony Black on the corner over there made the tackle. Second down and five at the 25. Dixon's an outstanding receiver. He's very strong. Six foot one inch. He's tall. He's 207 pounds. Had a great day last week. He had nine catches for 123 yards in a TD versus Auburn. He's Lock, the key. They need him. Clock is running there. A minute and a half. Peace is six for 10, 87 yards in the air so far. Peace again. Peace it out in the right flat for the 29 yard line. Darrell Jones made the tackle on Mateo. Mateo in in place of the tight end. Tackled by Darrell Jones. That's the 29-yard line. Oklahoma State, 17, Kansas State, 7. That's in the third quarter. Look at this. The final score, Missouri has upset Oklahoma by a final score of 10 to nothing. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Colorado is leading Kansas 24-6 to in the third quarter. Third down in the yard to go at the 29 here for Florida. Dixon in motion across. He's with the ball. First down. And continuing with it is John L. Williams, and uh, he is up there about the 40-yard line. Tony Flack again made the tackle. He is number eight. First down. First down and 10 yards to go at the 40-yard line for the Gators. 
talking with John yesterday during a light workout they had. I said, John, do you prefer to be called as John or John L? He said, I prefer to be or prefer to be referred to as John L. Williams. He got the first and ten at the 40 yard line. Waiting by Hampton. Penalty marker on the play. It's a linesman's flag. Tony Black again is on the tackle. Find the cornerback for the Georgia Bulldogs. Offside defense refused, he said. Because it is a first down at the 48 yard line. It is once again in Florida territory. And time has run out in the quarter. So the quarter could snap at the period ended. And that is the end of the first quarter. In the annual Florida Georgia game, it's been a battle of field goals, and Florida is leading it by a score of six to three. Test pilot Chuck Yeager for AC Delco. In a high performance fighter, we go from the griddle to more than 20 degrees below in just seconds. Well, here's an all-weather fighter for your car, the new Delco Freedom Dura Power Battery. Hot or cold, it's got the starting power you can depend on. With a Freedom Battery, you never need to add a drop of water. Get a Delco Freedom Battery for your car, now from just $39.95. Call 800-AC-DELCO. Mom, how come Jeffy Wilson gave me his rabbit? Well, since Jeffy's dad died, they have to move to an apartment. Do we have to move if something happens to our dad? Oh, no, baby. Allstate Update. Mortgage Protection Life Insurance. With an Allstate Mortgage Protection Plan, it doesn't cost much to help make sure a paid-up house is there for your family, even if you aren't. Don't worry, Murphy. You never have to move again. You're in good hands with Allstate. There's something special happening at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Fresh butter milk biscuits made from scratch. Our chicken and biscuits are perfect match. Light and fluffy, they're made from scratch. We start with real buttermilk, and we make them fresh all through the day. Fresh, like our chicken, because that's the Colonel's way. Fresh buttermilk biscuits made from scratch. Our chicken and biscuits are perfect match. One more way, we do chicken right. I see by your job application, You've scored six million on the video game Munchman. Yeah. And I see you shot down two billion aliens from the planet Mongo. Yeah. You are good at computer games. So what do you know about computers? If you're going to spend your time playing video games, why not play them on something that can also teach you about computing? Get a Commodore 64 or VIC-20. It's tough to grow up in a computer age without learning about computers. Jack Snow, we've played a quarter. I haven't seen anything that leads me to believe either team's going to have an easy time so far. No question of it. Uh, Georgia's been stopped a couple of times. Florida can throw the ball, but they can get down to the goal line, but they can't put it across. That's going to hurt them. They've got to put that ball, get some movement on the ground. So it's a 6-3 ball game, and we start the second quarter. Lindsey Nelson with Jack Snow at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. Peace is the quarterback. And it's our little draw. And it was taken by John L. Williams. Number 22, John and now let's go to New York to find out about the Pittsburgh and Notre Dame from Brett. Lindsay, you better send your partner, Jack Snow, back to South Bend. They need him. Right now, the Panthers are all over the Fighting Irish. We're just in the first quarter. That was Joe McCall, 14-0 Pittsburgh. Back to Lindsay and Jack. Okay, Jack, you go to Atlanta. You go to Atlanta and you turn slightly low. Yes, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Second down and eight yards to go. He for the short drop, completes it out in the left flat. It's down to the 35-yard line and on to the 30-yard line and down to the 28-yard line to Ray McDonald from Bell Glade, Florida. That is the first and 10 for the Florida Gators at the 28. Great job by Peaser. He's under a lot of pressure. Flicks the ball with his wrist. Gets it out there in the flat. Good move here. Little step there. He tries to get back to the outside. That's a good move because he, that's where all his open area is, getting back to the outside. So the Gators picked up 18 yards on the play, and they're driving once again, and they're leading by a score of 6-3. to three. The 
Down at his feet. Complete this one just inside the 25 yard line. Taken by Lorenzo Hampton. Caught it again at three yards to make it second down and seven. Watching Peace, Lindsay, he does a good job of picking up that secondary receiver. He saw that there was going to be a three on two over here on the strong side, which means three Georgia Bulldogs defenders against two of his receivers. He came back to the weak side, stood in there nice, and got the ball. Tommy Thurston made the last tackle. This time they just try to pick Hampton again, and he gets to the 21 yard line. Picked up about four on that play. Lorenzo Hampton from Lake Wales, Florida. Tommy Thurston again on the play. He is from Jacksonville. Third quarter, Baylor and Arkansas. All tied. There's a third down and two now for Florida at the Georgia 21 yard line. Happens the tailback. Peace has got the ball. And he's throwing. And it is intercepted for a touchback. Taken by Charlie Dean for the touchback. He'll come out to the 20-yard line. So Georgia again has stalled the Florida drive. Georgia gets the ball first and 10 at the 20-yard line. He's going to go. He's going to try to go to his tight end. He's going to roll out to the left. He's going to bring his tight end Odom in behind. What happens is Dean is not sucked into it. He'll stay back in the hole, deep in center field. Now watch this. Great protection. There's Odom. Good job by Dean. Takes him out of a hole. Do you have anything in aviation? The Army's most technical training. Are there any openings in communications? Is also the Army's most popular training. I'd really like computers. So it pays to have a reservation. Electronics. If you qualify, you can get a guaranteed reservation for the training you want up to 12 months in advance. Even if you're still in high school. We'll see you after graduation. It's great. Thank you. Congratulations. The next time you make a long-distance business call, think about this. Long-distance is important to every business. And only one long-distance company can connect you with anyone, anywhere in the world. AT&T. We can custom design a network for you and help increase productivity and manage costs. That's enough to satisfy any business, even accounting. AT&T. We're what you call long-distance. Can quarterback Rick Neuheisel take UCLA one step closer to the Rose Bowl? They face Pac-10 rival Arizona, NCAA football, next Saturday on CBS Sports. On CBS next Saturday, UCLA at Arizona, and it all starts with the NCAA today at 12 noon Eastern time. We're getting down to the part of the football season where big games are indicative now every week, and that's a big one next week on CBS, UCLA and Arizona. That's Dean who made the interception. And giving Georgia the ball, first and 10 at the 20-yard line. John Lastinger at the quarterback. A little ride there, and he kept it himself. As he likes to do, he rode with his fullback down to the 24. Now let's find out about Maryland and Auburn by going to New York and Brent Musburger. Lindsey Auburn now is taking command against Maryland. Here is Tommy Agee again, his second score. The defense was looking for the pitch to Bo Jackson. The middle was open, 44 yards. Now it's 28 to 17. Let's go back to Lindsey. All right, Brenton, keep in mind that next week Auburn plays Georgia. And he's young, the fullback. Very young gets it up there. Well, they'll mark it, I think, about the 29 where his knee hit. Fred McAllister was the linebacker on the tackle. Again, about five on that play by the fullback to make it third down and no, yard or so. One, maybe two. Young has carried seven times for 31 yards so far. Just saw Bill Lewis, the defensive coordinator for the Georgia Bulldogs, talking to his linebacker and secondary crew. Florida has far out distance Georgia and yardage gained so far in the ball game. Last thing over the ball, he still got it. Looking for the first, and I think he got that before it was hauled down by Fred McAllister. Lassinger does an excellent job of this. He's coming down. He's going to either pitch out to 23 or keep it. He sees the opening right there. Comes in behind Young, 38. 
gets just enough for the first down. He looks like he maybe should have gotten a little bit more, but there was great pursuit from the Florida defense on that by McAllister. First and ten in advance of the 32-yard line for the Georgia Bulldogs. Kevin Harris on a wide left. Given to Young. I beg your pardon. It is given to Montgomery. He's Montgomery is stopped by Greg Cleveland. Dallas has made the tackle. That'll be up there at the 33-yard line. Second down at about nine yards to go here in the final. Michigan has won the football game. East Carolina is leading Miami seven to six in the fourth quarter. Iowa 34, Wisconsin nothing, third quarter. Final score, Ohio State 56, Indiana 17. Last finger. Still got it. And he stopped just about at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be third down and still about nine yards to go to 33. Tim Newton, nose man, was in there to make the tackle. Newton weighs 270. We were told the other day that he came to school at the University of Florida weighing 210, went up to 290, now plays at 270. Third down, eight yards. He's a big man, as we saw him yesterday again here in the stadium for about 20 minutes, and he weighs 270 pounds. He is very, very large. Third down conversion, Georgia is five of six. But this is along with 39. Fred Lane is in there on a wide left, number four. Last finger. Going to Lane. Lane can't get it, and neither can Vaughn, although he almost did. Vaughn, who intercepted earlier, number 47, had a shot at that one. That'll bring the punter in. Take another quick look at it. He's just going to run basically the fly pattern. <laughs> the last thing he does is he tries to throw deep, but Vaughn never gets beat deep. He's in good position right there. Excellent try. Should have come up with the ball, though. Should have come up with the ball. Chip Andrews is coming to do the punting now. He has averaged 38.6. His long is 53 for the year. Florida has dropped back Roger Sibal. Andrews gets the kick away. Sibal moves up. Takes it at the 28. He's got a wall, but he couldn't get around to get the benefit of it, and he's pulled down back there about the 26 by Calvin Ruff. And so now the Florida Gators get the ball once again. They'll start first and 10 to the 26, a 40-yard punt. Introducing the 1984 Volkswagen Jetta. It doesn't drive like a car. The Jetta has a German-built engine, German-built suspension, and the performance of a true German sports sedan. Yet, the Jetta costs only $7,390. You drive a car because you have to. You drive a Jetta because you love to. Jetta. It's not a car. It's a Volkswagen. We just had to find a cheaper way to heat and cool our home. Then we heard about a system that uses a special pipe developed by Phillips Petroleum that circulates water below ground. The earth warms the water in the winter and cools it in the summer. So the system's heat pump works less. And our energy costs are cut up to 50%. Now, I don't have to buy gasoline at Phillips 66, but I do, because some of their ideas strike pretty close to home. Fine products for you and your car from Phillips Petroleum, the performance company. Monday on Emerald Point, Harlan plots to gain Maggie's affections. About your husband. I do anything to get more to that. You and Harlan Adams are going to hurt somebody that I care about. A reminder, tomorrow in National Football League action on CBS Sports, many of you will see an important NFC Western Division showdown between the Atlanta Falcons and the New Orleans Saints. The Falcons have won two in a row. They're looking to avenge an early 19-17 loss to the Saints. Tomorrow on CBS. Quick pitch to Anderson, and Neil Anderson's got the football up to about the 31-yard line. Down by Freddie Gilbert. Last singer, and beside him is Buck Ballou, former quarterback great at the University of Georgia. Last singer, of course, number 12, and Buck Ballou just beside him. Second down and five yards to go for Florida. Peace. A lot of time, but batted down right there. And again, it was Freddie Gilbert. Freddie Gilbert, one of the outstanding defenders in college football, number 90. 
Watch Gilbert here to get that hand, that big hand up and gets it knock, knocks the ball down. He's a big man, 6'4, 245 pound senior. Big man for the Georgia defense. Third and five at the 31. Florida is leading by a score of six to three, and we're on the second quarter, and that's Gilbert. He's to Lonzo Hampton, and he is across the 35. Looks from here as though he might be Anderson maybe an inch or so short. Thurston made the tackle. They take a long look toward the sideline. That's pretty close on you. I want to say that he's, he's a little short on that. That's what the officials say. They say short and fourth down coming up. So the punting unit is coming on for Florida. Florida is leading by a score of 63. Ray Criswell is coming out. Criswell has averaged 48.5 and as long as in 58 yards. Jimmy Harrell is dropping back deep to receive it. Criswell gets it off. Harold retreats, takes it at the 11-yard line. Harold to the 15, to the 20, and out to the 22-yard line, and that is where Georgia will start first and 10 at their own 22. The tackle was made by Dickens on the play. Florida is leading 6 3, 8 minutes, 11 seconds left to play in the first half of the ball game. Boy, a racerback. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. For Michelob White? Catch you later! A couple of guys really go at it like this for a beer? Well, it is Michelob Light, the rich, smooth taste you can compare to any beer you like. Michelob Light for the winner. Too bad you missed that light back then. Yeah, but I made this one. Michelob Light! When you have your own business, you eat your own mistakes. So while others were getting apples and IBMs, I waited until a friend who really knows personal computers said, get the Epson. I never thought state of the art could be so simple. For starters, the Epson speaks English, not computerese like some. With buttons and keys, you understand instantly. Want to draw a graph? Push, draw. In less than a day, I was getting the help I got a computer for. I'm glad I waited for the Epson, because now I can forget all the computerese I never learned. NCAA football, competitive excitement at all levels. The same thrills can be enjoyed in Division II and Division III as you've come to expect in Divisions 1A and 1AA. Join the colorful traditions at over 100 Division II and nearly 200 Division III NCAA colleges that sponsor football. You'll be glad you did. At the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, midway of the second quarter, Florida is leading Georgia by a score of 6-3. to three. I'm Lindsey Nelson with Jack Snow. Georgia has the ball first and 10 at the 22, and Todd Williams is in there at quarterback in place of last finger now. Williams started one game this year for Georgia. Barry Young and Scott Williams. Now the setback with here on a one-back set. Out to the right in the flat. And advanced by Herman Archie across the 25-yard line, up to the 28. Bruised left thumb for last thing. That's he along the sideline. A bruised left thumb is the report. Todd Williams is quarterback is in now for Georgia. He's, he's a, a decent quarterback. He's only a sophomore. His stats are pretty good. He throws it better than 50%. Second down and four yards to go. Stop the snap. Double on the snap and the pile up there, and Todd Williams got it himself. The new quarterback having a little trouble there with the snap from the center. You know, that happens normally when you get in the heat of a, of a ball game of this size. You get a new quarterback coming in there. The center is a little, a little uh, unused to the hand feel. There might be more pressure from Lastinger than there is from Williams, or whatever the case may be. I had noticed it before Todd went in the ball game. He was taking some snaps from Pete Anderson, the center. Third and six at the 26. McCluskey's in that backfield now. They're going for the ball. Make it out there all the way up to the 29-yard line. Vince Dooley, coach of the Georgia Bulldogs. Alonzo Johnson made that last stop, and it's fourth and three, and that brings the punting in it on now as the Bulldogs will have to give it up. Bulldogs have lost only one conference game in the last three years, last four years, as a matter of fact. Chip Andrews in to do the punting. Roger Sibal has dropped back to receive it, standing at his own 30. That's Sibal. A session of calisthenics there. 
Andrews gets it off. High trajectory. The ball at the 20 yard line. 25, 30. He'll be marked about the 32 yard line. First down and 10. Peter Anderson there on the play. A 50 yard punt. Return for 13 yards. Florida leading Georgia by a score of 6 to 3. If you're looking for an investment firm, I've got some advice for you. I want to tell you the single best way to choose that investment firm. Just ask a lot of investors a lot of questions. Ask if their broker really listens, really cares, and ask them how they're doing. I'm telling you this because I believe you're going to hear a lot of good things about one company, Dean Witter. I think you'll find Dean Witter worth asking about. Dean Witter. Worth asking about. Shots are shot, treads are thin, mufflers gone. Well, come on in. There's more for your life than tears. Where else could you change your tires, take your reins, smooth out your ride, and catch the game? There's more for your life, for the times of your life. There's more for your life. Tuesday, when a kid gets framed, Ben takes it very personally. Do you think you're sort of acting more like his father than his lawyer? But will his trust lead to deceit the Mississippi? That is last thing or some you saw there at the start of that shot. That's last thing along the sideline who is out of the ball game, and Todd Williams replaced him. When we were in uh, Athens on Wednesday, we talked to George Hafner, the offensive coordinator, and asked him if there was any pattern to the alternation of the two quarterbacks. William from last thing, and he said no, not at all. That they simply made the changes whenever they felt they should be made. First and ten for Florida, and here's Wayne Peake. Screen out to the left to Alonzo Hampton. Well, he broke the jersey tackle, and he's still alive, but not for long. Did get some yardage out of it. He got all the way up to the 33-yard line, which was the line of scrimmage. Second down and ten. Knox Culpepper made the tackle. Hampton might have got a lot more yardage had he not been uh, shirt tied by Freddie Gilbert, number 90 for Georgia. Gilbert really hustled over there to slow him down, forced him back inside where all the defensive pressure was coming from. I think if you'll just look for number 90, you'll see a lot of him around the football field in the course of an afternoon. He's an outstanding football player, Freddie Gilbert. On the draw play. It is Hampton, and he got up there to the 38-yard line before Culpepper made the tackle. A gain of five yards on the play, making third down and five. Jack Snow and I went to Athens on Wednesday and uh, had sessions with George Hafner, the offensive coordinator, and Bill Lewis, the defensive coordinator. And then we went to Florida on Thursday and had sessions with offensive coordinator Mike Shanahan and defensive coordinator Joe Kine. Peace with the ball. Rolling and looking. And keep it. And running to the 40, 45, 50, and out of bounds. It'll be marked near the 48 yard line. Knox Culpepper bounced him out of there. And so let's hear about Maryland and Auburn from Brent Musburger in New York. Lindsay, two dramatic developments. Boomer Esiason had given Maryland a shot with three minutes to go with this beautiful touchdown pass. It was 28 to 23. Just seconds ago, Auburn's defense scored, and now Auburn is in complete command. They're going to win. Let's go back to Lindsay. All right, Brandon, that is the Southeastern Conference team. Auburn, of course, that will be playing Georgia in an SEC game next week. Here's Hampton. He's across the 45, and he gets on down to the 40, and gets very close to the 6, depending on exactly where it's marked on that sideline. Cantrell is the man who made the tackle, along with Tommy Thurston. Basic draw play. Hampton was looking to go right up the middle. He couldn't do that, so he bounced outside, which is great heads up by Hampton. The key on that was a block by number 83, Dwayne Dixon, who came back down inside, nailed the linebacker of Georgia, and allowed Hampton to jump outside and pick up yardage it may be a first down they're going to bring the sticks all the way across as you watch Spence Dooley head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs they are going to check for the first down right where the ball was along the sideline and it is not a first down they're going to use the chain out of market at the inbounds marker Robert Ayer is the referee here 
The umpire is Jack Smalley. The headlines one is Bert Ackerman. The line judge is Tommy Lorino. The field judge is Joe Delaney. And Lino and the back judge is Ned Wilkie. Electric clock operator is Bill Stanton. Miami has come back to take the lead late in the game over East Carolina, 12 to 7, and that's in the fourth quarter. Gator, the uh, Orange Bowl has been looking longingly at Miami as a possible opponent for Nebraska in the Orange Bowl game. Neal and Dixon with the wide receivers. First and 10 at the 39, I rather second and one at the 39 yard line. That's the first down. Hampton picked it up. Lorenzo Hampton from Lake Wales, Florida, 208 pounder, and he was stopped by Kenneth Sim. As a first down for Florida. First and 10 now for the Gators. It is outside the 37. That's their eighth first down. The Gators have been able to move the football in this ball game, but they have only a three-point lead because when they've got close, that is when the Georgia defense has managed to crank them down. 175 total yards for Florida in this ball game so far. That's Hampton again. Has to cut back and moves it down to the 31-yard line. He got six yards on that play. It'll be second down and four. Here is the final. Miami has defeated Eastern Carolina by a score of 12 to 7. So the Miami Hurricanes escaped with their lives, but they escaped. Howard Schnellenberger wanted that win. You can you can bet on that, Lindsay. You know he did. That's Charlie Pell along the sideline. Played his college football on the Bear Bryant at the University of Alabama. Charlie Pell came here to the University of Florida, that is, from Clemson, where he was head coach. Popped it out to the right flat. Popped out suddenly. Red Weichman was a receiver on that one. Good little little hitch job there. Picks the ball up, turns up field. And that is going to be at the 25 yard line. About it now at the 26. First down and 10 yards to go. Red Weichman, the receiver on the play. Mikey Neal is in a wide left. For the Florida Gators. He's gets it to his fullback. Taken quickly by John L. Williams, and he gets it up there to the 20-yard line, a six-yard gain on the play. It'll be second and four. Here is a final. Auburn has defeated Maryland 35 to 23. Auburn 35, Maryland 23, a final score. Now keep in mind, next week, Georgia plays Auburn. Second and four here at the 21-yard line. That's Hampton again. Got the first down, and he's inside the 15. Lorenzo Hampton. Charlie Dean in the next tackle. He was good running by Hampton. He gets that ball, he heads up here. He tries to run north and south as soon as he can. He wants to not go east and west. That's where he gets thrown for losses. You get those shoulders, you head upfield. Got a good block from 21, Frank Neal on the play. Two minutes to play on the first half. The ball is at the 14-yard line. Again, that is Hampton. Struggling down to the 12-yard line. He got only two that time. It'll be second down and eight. And it was Gilbert, along with Calvin Ruff, who converged on him there. The lights are on. The shadows have lengthened here in the late afternoon in Jacksonville, Florida. This is a situation that Bill Lewis, the defensive coordinator of Georgia, wants. He wants Florida in a second and long situation. And here it is, second and eight. Let's see what happens. In this area that Florida has stalled earlier in this ball game. Again, they give it to Hampton. Hampton on the draw gets it down to the six or seven yard line. Calvin Ruff made the tackle. It's gonna be third and a long two here. Vince he's a little concerned, you betcha. He's a little concerned watching that clock run down. And the clock has wound down to exactly one minute remaining to be played in the half. Florida's leading six to three. It's his third down. And two yards to go along to. Ball spotted outside the six-yard line. He's for the pitch again. To Lorenzo. Hampton is still for a loss. And look at Gilbert, number 90, along with Calvin Ruff. Knox Culpepper also on the play. The swarming defense of the Georgia Bulldogs. That brings up a fourth down. 
And here comes Butler again. The clock says 29 seconds. It's still running. Ball is spotted outside the 10-yard line. It is Bobby Raymond, it is, who's uh, coming out to do the kicking, of course. Chriswell will hold for him. Clock is running, and it's down to seven seconds. And this will be a 27-yarder. And the whistle blew before he could kick it. Whistle blew before he could kick it, and time had run out. Whistle blew before he could kick it, and that means the time had run out. Robert Arlier. 25 seconds. 25 second clock had expired no time is showing on the game clock the question is did the 25 second clock run out before the game clock because if the 25 second clock ran out he will get another shot at it that's right because the clock would not start until the snap and once in play they'd get a chance to kick it exactly that must be the case otherwise they wouldn't be marking off the penalty how much time remains, I don't know. It doesn't really much matter if any remains at all. And now Robert Allier says timeout for Florida. So the Gators take a timeout. No time remaining on the clock, and Florida's leading 6-3 in these closing seconds of the half. Today, the most exciting new ideas in the hotel business come from Holiday Inn. Holiday Inn is a better place to be. It works much better. It tastes much better. Better and better. Really better. Holodex 2, the industry's first bimodal reservation system, ensures your room is waiting. Innovations like this make Holiday Inn Hotels number one. Number one, your worldwide host. First and what you want the most. Call 800-HOLIDAY. Holiday Inn is a better place to be. Because the cost of all energies is rising, manufacturers of heating equipment have developed more efficient designs to help you keep costs down. That's good, but the claims can be confusing. So here are a few simple facts about natural gas. Gas delivers America's best energy value because gas is America's most efficient energy system. So when you invest in modern high-efficiency gas appliances, America's best energy value gets even better. Today and tomorrow, gas gives you more for your money. They would like to put two seconds back on the clock, but it doesn't matter because they'll get the snap off and the field goal attempt will be made by Bobby Raymond. This will be a 32-yarder. Chriswell will hold. Two seconds really remains on the clock, although nothing shows. That's been explained to the coaches. Bart is leading 6-3, making a attempt here to get three more points before the end of the half. It's down. And it's good. A 32-yarder. By Bobby Raymond is good, and time ran out, of course, to make the score nine to three. Inter interesting that Florida went up and down the field this first half, but could not punch a six-pointer in. They had to settle for three field goals. What George is doing is they're continuing to maintain their step on the ground, stay on the ground, a little ball control pass, but they haven't been successful at that. So our score is Florida nine, Georgia three, and we'll be back with Brennan Era from New York with scores and highlights after this word about an upcoming show on CBS and the message from your local station. Tuesday, Lindsay Wagner was everything a mom is supposed to be until her tragic death and Ricky Schroeder was left with half a family. I hate you being my father! Two kinds of love. This is CBS. Compared to the time you spend behind the wheel, 30 seconds is hardly a fair amount of time to judge the handling characteristics of any car. One car recognizes that reality, the Mercury Topaz. Instead of trying to fully explain the advantages of independent rear suspension and front wheel drive, we invite you to experience the effect for yourself and discover in this free 20-page book a more detailed explanation of Topaz's many advancements. The 1984 Mercury Topaz, a more enlightened approach. Cook's Pest Control has been protecting southern homes and businesses from termites and other pests for over 50 years. Cook's technicians are the most thoroughly trained in the industry. Call us for a free inspection. Looky, 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 here comes Cookie. Cook's Pest Control. Cook's Pest Control. Hello, Cook's. Goodbye, pest. Now the worries of my mind. Got that big blue team of standing right by my side. Solid gold tonight at 7 on TV 12. 
The National Youth Sports Program is dedicated to expanding opportunities for the nation's economically disadvantaged youth. NYSP means health education and counseling and career and educational opportunities. NYSP is people concerned with helping young people. NYSP, building a positive attitude for today's youth, preparing better citizens for tomorrow, co-sponsored by the federal government and the NCAA. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. Back in New York, I'm Brent Musburger with the coach, Era Parsegan. And Era, Nebraska continues to roll. They now have a 19-game winning streak, 42-21. to They are in the third quarter. It's going to be easy. Mike Rozier today has scored two touchdowns, 22 on the season. The record is 26, held by Lydell Mitchell. He said it, of course, when he's playing at Penn State. Texas and Houston. And the Longhorn offense is sluggish today. Houston is very much in this game. It is only 6-3 now in the third quarter. Auburn comes back to win dramatically, 35-23. And, of course, next week, Auburn goes into Georgia in a key confrontation in the southeast. Now, watch Randy Campbell go to Chris Woods, wide open for a touchdown, and Auburn took a lead. And, Errol, what do you think of Boomer Esiason? He's really an outstanding football player. I, one of the greatest I've seen. Unfortunately, they come up short. This was a touchdown pass that he got, but they came up short in the game. Then, of course, they had Tommy Agee, the blocking back. And when they went looking for Bo Jackson, well, Auburn just turned Agee loose for two long touchdown runs. He rushed for better than 200 yards in that game. The Miami Hurricanes are now within one victory of the Orange Bowl. They go into Tallahassee. They play the Seminoles of Florida State. And if they beat them next week, they'll take them into the Orange Bowl, and that would set up a probable confrontation with Nebraska. Miami comes from behind with a minute to go and beats East Carolina 12-7 to the final there. In the second, SMU meeting resistance from Rice, 6-3. Now they've gone to the third quarter. And Clemson beats back North Carolina for the Tar Heels, their second loss in a row. They moved up in class schedule-wise. They lose to Maryland and today to Clemson. Missouri upsets Oklahoma 10 to nothing. Oklahoma was held to 84 yards rushing here. And, of course, Oklahoma never does as well on grass as they do on artificial turf. Marion Adler rolling, going to Andy Hill. And Andy Hill gets open and makes a slick catch in the end zone. And Barry Switzer had his difficulty. The Sooners simply could not rally in the second half, and they are shut out by Missouri 10 to nothing. Michigan comes back after that loss to Illinois, 42 to 10. Steve Smith, four touchdown passes on the day, and he rushed for a fifth. Ohio State hammers Indiana, 56 to 17 was the final. Iowa impressed a host of Bull Scouts today, 34-7 over Wisconsin. Now they are in the fourth quarter. Boston College and Doug Flutie, they could be headed for something big. 34-14 over Army. West Virginia comes back after losing two in a row. Jeff Hostetler tosses two touchdown passes there. And, of course, Pittsburgh is shutting out Notre Dame, 14-0. They are in the second quarter of that game, and era, it has been sluggish for the Irish so far. It really has. The defense has played an outstanding game, and, of course, this is where Ballard, the defensive right halfback, slips and falls. It's a great play. Bill Wallace catches the ball and takes it in for the first pitch score. And here's the fumble by Pinkett right here, and Pittsburgh recovers it. And the thing that is interesting here is they are able to command the line of scrimmage. Great running here by Joe McCall, and he gets it in for the second score. And they are not yet at the end of the first half in that game. Here are Alabama had a tough game against LSU. LSU now is 0-5 in the Southeastern Conference, but Bama was able to rally for Ray Perkins and pull it out. And key play, I guess, still was the block punt here. This is a, I think the punter took too many steps here, caused the block, and of course, as you know, in college football, you can advance a block kick, and he does in this case, and brought the first touchdown to Alabama. Walter Lewis, Bama's fine quarterback, scrambling here. We'll find Joey Jones in the end zone. Watch the catch by Jones. All alone back there, but he managed to get that one foot inbounds. They win it 32-26 is the final in two weeks. They take on Auburn. Now, in the second quarter, UCLA is shutting out Oregon by 14 points. The Bruins could be headed for the Rose Bowl. Arizona State and California are tied at seven in the second. USC is ahead of Stanford by six. They are in the first. Penn State over Brown, but not as much as you might have expected. 38-21 was the final in that game. And Oklahoma State in the fourth, leading Kansas State 20-14. Oklahoma State, they could be headed for a bowl game, too. Colorado beating Kansas in the third, 24-12. In the third, Baylor and Arkansas are tied at 21. And also in the third, 
Texas Tech over Texas Christian 10-7. And a final score, Michigan State beats Northwestern 9-3 in Dyke Stadium. And Duke behind Ben Bennett beats Wake Forest 31-21 was the final there. Syracuse beats Navy by 7, 14-7. And how about this for a surprise? Columbia and Dartmouth settle for a tie. Dartmouth was favored in that game. They, of course, were the Ivy League co-leader. And Cornell wins its first under head coach Maxie Bond. 41 to 7 over winless Yale and this is a big upset too. Harvard managing to tie Holy Cross. Holy Cross of course came into that game 8 and 0. Colgate beats Penn 34 to 20 was the final in that game. Princeton an easy winner over Lafayette 41 to 33 and of course the game you're watching a battle of the field goals so far and the Gators lead them dogs but era I got to say the Bulldogs are hanging tough. Really, it's amazing to me that uh, Florida has commanded this game, but Georgia shows you how they win. They've only given up nine points that were down to the one-yard line. They couldn't get, Florida couldn't get it in. It's amazing, and they just keep hanging, hanging. They're only a touchdown and an extra point away. All right. This the game isn't settled yet. And the NCAA today will continue on CBS in just a moment. Higher education today. People pursuing knowledge, discovering more about areas affecting our daily lives. Purdue University offers an outstanding program in computer-integrated design. What attracts people to this field? All of us here in the CAD Lab are, uh, are interested in developing tools, that is, computer programs, for mechanical engineers to use out in the real world. I want the computer to be a partner for the engineer, an assistant. I can make the engineer work faster. He can try more options. He can try things that he wouldn't be able to do in the real world because they're unsafe, because they're too expensive. He can go through a lot of iterations in the design procedure, come up with something better. Today's student, I think, is much more aggressive and much more aware of the future in his field than five, 10 years ago. And they're much more aware of the world situation. They're aware of the need for technical skills and, and the job market that requires these. You find students that come into the computer graphics class know what the ability to visualize and plan means to the things they're interested in. And with that kind of enthusiasm, it's hard to go wrong. Higher education today. Challenging, motivating the mind. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. One month from now, the College Football Foundation will hold its annual dinner here in New York to honor this year's inductees into the College Football Hall of Fame. Four coaches have been singled out for this special recognition. The late Frank Murray, who coached at Virginia and Marquette. Frank Broyles, who left his mark at Arkansas. Woody Hayes, a legend at Ohio State. And Darrell Royal, down in Texas. This was the scene seven years ago when Darrell Royal wrapped up his coaching career at the University of Texas with a big win over Arkansas. Royal led the Longhorns to ten Cotton Bowls and two national champions, and last Saturday he was honored at Memorial Stadium for his election into the Hall of Fame. You know, that's a very warming thing, and to uh, be taken into the National uh, Hall of Fame is, uh, is something that I never dreamed would happen to me, and now that it's a reality, it, it makes you feel pretty warm. Meanwhile, in Columbus, Ohio, another coach feeling pretty warm was Woody Hayes, the Buckeyes commander-in-chief for 28 years. He produced 13 Big Ten titles, eight Rose Bowl bursts, two national championships, and he retired with 238 career coaching victories. Good for fourth place on the all-time list. But the Hall of Fame means something very special to the old warrior. Well, I'm enormously honored, but at the same time, it makes you realize how much you owe to so many other people, your players, your coaches, and your administrative helpers, and to the great university that you represent. And at halftime, Hayes capped his day by dotting the I in the Buckeye Band's famous script, Ohio. It is a very special honor normally reserved for deserving band members. And they will join Era, who is already a member of the Hall of Fame. Coach, you got that for the splendid job at Northwestern. I know. <laughs> How about some of the players that are going to join these coaches now in the Hall of Fame? Well, among the players are some outstanding and famous names. Dick Budkus, Leroy Jordan, Floyd Little, 
O.J. Simpson, and some of those guys I played again, and also a couple Notre Dames are, Notre Damers are going to be inducted, Bill Fisher and also the late Bill Shakespeare. All right, and congratulations to one and all. And we will continue with our coverage of the NCAA Today on CBS in just a moment. <laughs> Alone at last. But Phil, look. Huh? Oh, that. Doris, I need the blimp behind me because... Three the crowd, Phil. Phil may not know that Goodyear radials and their components have hundreds of quality checks behind them, but he sure likes the mileage he gets. Doris, will go a long way with the blimp behind us. Get the blimp behind you. Come up to Goodyear. I should have married Stanley. He just has a dog. For quality and dependability, shouldn't you have a quasar? Quasar. My dandruff shampoo is good. Maybe you should try something else. My dandruff shampoo really works. Maybe you should try something else, like Selsun Blue. Doctors and pharmacists recommend Selsun Blue more than all other leading brands combined. It's number one. What that means to you is no leading brand gets rid of dandruff better than Selsun Blue. Ask your doctor or pharmacist, or try it yourself. That's all the proof you'll need. Selsun Blue, it's number one. East Point, Maine, and Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. East Point means a New England clam bake, summer fun, and food at its best. And Milwaukee means beer, cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer, and smooth, golden, old Milwaukee light. And old Milwaukee, and old Milwaukee light. Taste as great as their name. You know, guys, it doesn't get any better than this. This is a CBS News update. I'm Marlene Sanders. In Lebanon, Syrian-backed rebel Palestinians kept up their attack on PLO leader Yasser Arafat's forces at Tripoli for the third straight day. Arafat's supporters retreated today from one refugee camp. Heavy casualties have been reported. Israel today revised its casualty figures for the truck bombing at Tyre. 28 Israeli soldiers and 32 Lebanese or Palestinian prisoners killed. More on that bombing from Bob Faw in Tel Aviv. The day after it happened, Israel took steps to make sure it would never happen again. Near roadblocks, soldiers moved in huge blocks of concrete, and elsewhere they spread out more barbed wire. For the second straight day, Tyre remained under curfew, the flow of traffic in, blocked. Israel's chief of staff said the area would temporarily be shut off from the rest of Lebanon, and that from now on, life for Lebanese civilians here would be much harder. And the day after, Israel started burying the victims, five today, all of them Druze. Tonight, a military spokesman revised the Israeli death toll downward by one to 28. Most of them will be buried tomorrow. Bob Paul, CBS News, Tel Aviv. Soviet President Andropov, who has not been seen in public since August 18th, did not appear today at the opening ceremony of the celebration of the Bolshevik Revolution. The spokesman said Andropov has a cold, but Western observers think his health may be worse than that. A 14-member congressional delegation is in Grenada now on a fact-finding trip. Today they visited the unmarked metal hospital, mistakenly bombed by U.S. jets during the invasion. The Army said the number of known dead in that bombing is 18. Reportedly, only two issues stand between Chrysler and the United Auto Workers in talks to end a five-day strike. But optimism earlier today for a quick settlement has begun to fade. This has been a CBS News update. I'm Marlene Sanders, New York. It's halftime in Jacksonville, Florida, and Florida is leading Georgia by a score of 9-3. to three. Hello again, everybody. I'm Lindsey Nelson with Jack Snow. Jack, when you've got only field goals and no touchdowns, it means somebody is moving the ball a lot, but not far enough, not all the way in there. Exactly. Florida has been doing an outstanding job of getting the ball from one end of the field to the other. The problem is they're not getting it across the goal line, uh, which reminds me a little bit of the old San Diego Chargers defensive philosophy, which Georgia has, is let's bend, but we're not going to break. What Florida's going to have to do, they're going to have to start getting some touchdowns, some legitimate touchdowns. 
Uh, they can do they can move the ball. They do it very well via the air. One interesting thing is that towards the end of the second quarter, they started to run the ball with a little bit of success. Of course, starting out in the ball game, they decided to use three wide receivers instead of a tight end, and that maneuver did work at the time. There's no question of that. What it does is it gives a little different look to the secondary. Now, when they come out, they're expecting to see one wide receiver on the left and one wide receiver on the right. When they see three guys and they know they can all burn, they're all burners, it puts a little stress on that secondary, and they have a tendency to play a little bit looser until they get a feel for exactly what Florida's going to do. Georgia has rushed for only 46 yards in the first half. You expect a little more out of that offense. I'm totally amazed at that. I know Coach Dooley is a great believer in, in, in the ground game and ball control, but I was very amazed at the fact that he has not put more yards on the board. They're going to have to do that. They're going to have to get a little more production out of their two quarterbacks via the air lanes. You're going to have to complete some passes and get down and score a couple of touchdowns. We had wondered at the start of the day whether or not Terry Hogue would play. He has not played so far. Once again, score at halftime is 9-6. to six. Florida is leading. I'm Robert Marston. A new and better world for all will grow from new opportunities in information transfer. Whether my own personal computer, improved student learning, or the protection of Florida's citrus industry, the University of Florida will be a part of and benefit from advances in the computer and information sciences. Because we know this will require new forms of cooperation, the University of Florida is developing this land for a research and technology park for industry. In 1985, America will celebrate another bicentennial, the 200th anniversary of state-supported higher education. Nine years after the Declaration of Independence, our nation's first state university was created by the people of Georgia. Since that time, the University of Georgia has become a center of excellence in teaching, research, and public service. Today, America's oldest chartered state university is ready for its third century of service. Bigger engines were easy on oil. But today's smaller, higher revving engines are tougher. They can break down an oil's viscosity within 1,500 miles. That's why there's Castrol. Tests show Castrol suffers no significant breakdown of viscosity even after 5,000 miles. So use Castrol, because if you make things too hard on your engine, your engine could make things hard on you. Castrol, engineered for smaller cars. We are an explorer, a farmer, a miner, and an insurance company. We're a pipeline, a truck line, a gold mine, and a leasing company. We're a builder, a printer, a logger and an energy company. We are more than 41,000 men and women working in 18 different industries all across America. We are Southern Pacific. We also run a railroad. versus Georgia, an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports, is sponsored by Chevrolet. America is on the move, and Chevrolet is supplying the wheels. Chevrolet and you taking charge. Delta faucets, when they're on, they're on. When they're off, they're off. And by Mr. Goodrich and General Motors Parts. As we start the second half now, Florida is leading Georgia by a score of 9 to 3. The temperature now 72 degrees, humidity 68 percent. Wind picked up a little 7 miles per hour. Georgia will receive, and it's Gary Moss and Darrell Jones back there. Georgia won the toss, waved it off so they would have the choice starting the second half. And Chris Perkins is going to do the kicking off from the hash mark left. Perkins ready to come and boot it up. Out of a knuckleball, taking on the bounce at about the 17-yard line by Daryl Jones, and returns it to the 20, breaks the tackle, and gets it up across the 25 to the 26-yard line, maybe the 27. Patrick Miller made the tackle. Well, we've got bowl representatives, a house full of them here today. 
Representing the Cotton Bowl, Jim Brock and J.L. Huffhide. The Sugar Bowl, Elliot Lauterman and John Bovinger. The Orange Bowl, Bill Ward. The Gator Bowl, Chris Verlander and President Bill Nimick. The Sun Bowl, Randy Lee. The Liberty Bowl, Jim Kinney. And we'll tell you about some more in just a moment. It's taken by McCluskey, David McCluskey. Gets it up there across the 31-yard line. Last singer is the quarterback starting the second half. So with the injured left thumb and all, last singer is back in the ball game. Fiesta Bowl representatives are Jim Meyer and Tom Ferdina, and the Citrus Bowl is represented by Charlie Glisson, Tommy Thompson, and Dylan Thomas. So we have a whole house full of bowl representatives here watching Georgia and Florida. Second down and six yards to go. Last singer with the ball, keeps it. Gets up near the 34 before Greg Cleveland comes in to bring him down. So it will be third down and about three yards to go at the 34-yard line. Interesting note, Lindsay, that, that Lassinger is now back in there at quarterback. I don't think Coach Dooley, I think Coach Dooley kind of gets a feel for who he wants in there and just... And he makes that decision right now, and I think that's what's happening at the start of the second half. McCluskey and Young are the backs in the ball game at the moment. Last thing of throwing, and it's Kay, his tight end, Kyle Kay, incomplete. He went high into the air, but it is an incomplete pass to Clarence Kay. Tony Lilly was the defender there, number 18. He had, get it, come on. he had Kay, Lindsay. I mean, there's no question about it. Kay went down and ran about it, ran about a 12, 14 yard hook out or turn out. Lasting a roll out to his left. He spotted him and hit him with the ball, unfortunately, just a little bit too high. Chip Andrews is back to do the punting, and Roger Sidball has dropped back to receive it. Georgia in punt formation. Andrews puts it up there, driving Sibal back all the way back to the 13-yard line. He's at the 15. He's at the 20. Backed up at the 21-yard line. It was Gary Moss who made the tackle. So it'll be first down and 10 yards to go for the Gators as they have their first possession at the 21-yard line. That was a 54-yard putt. One company provides cars and trucks to satisfy the wants and needs of virtually every man and woman in the USA. That's today's Chevrolet. One company puts some of the world's most advanced manufacturing and design facilities to work for America. That's today's Chevrolet. America, you're on the move again. And Chevrolet is providing your wheels. And you. Feeling fit. Susan Anton. Fitness that feels good by day needs firmness that feels good by night. Top comfort, deep support. You get both in every Serta Perfect Sleeper. You see, only the Serta Perfect Sleeper has the total suspension system. It's a new dimension of total support and comfort to give you a great night's sleep. Perfect Sleeper by Serta. It's a healthy investment in yourself. Next weekend, the Remsen Stakes, the 1983 World Figure Skating Champions, the World Cup Acrobatics Championship, plus John Madden's Journeys on CBS Sports Saturday. Sports Saturday returns next week with a whole host of interesting events. The Remsen Stakes, the 1983 World Figure Skating Champions, and John Madden's Journeys. John is going to be exploring how some former NFL players are coping with physical problems caused by football. That all starts at 4 next Saturday, Sports Saturday. First and 10 at the 21-yard line. And running room for John L. Williams. And Williams moves it upfield for the Gators across the 35 to the 36-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go, a 15-yard gain on the play for John L. Williams. He did at halftime. As they went at halftime, so we can run the ball on him. Let's watch Williams right here. They're getting good blocking up front, a huge hole. Williams breaks into the clear, gets upfield. Tough back. Look at him keep his, maintain his feet, fight for extra yardage. Good John, job by John L. Williams. He's handing it out to his fullback, Barry Young. He's stumbling. Oh, it's John L. Williams. John L. Williams across the 40 on up across the 45-yard line. Yardage for John L. Williams. And Darrell Jones is the man who finally made the stop at the 47-yard line. That's enough for another first down on an 11-yard pickup for John L. Williams. Must have been some, time, some half time that they had in the Florida locker room. They came in there and said, we're going to be able to run the ball on him. Let's look at Williams again. 
he, he, he hits in there and he bounces out. He keeps his feet going. What he does is he keeps his, his momentum, slides to the outside. He nails Daryl Jones. He carried five times for 34 yards. Tries his tailback this time. Hampton, Lorenzo, and he got it up maybe for a gain of a yard. Not much Culpepper on Thurston converts to make the tackle. Thurston made the tackle for Georgia. Second on and nine yards to go at the 48. Georgia has defeated Florida five consecutive years. And the Florida Gators are leading in this ball game right now by a score of nine to three. Walter Odom is in that tight end, number 82. Lang is a wide receiver. Takes the draw. Wayne Pease throws a screen. Lorenzo Hampton has got it. And all of that gained about a foot. Donald, Donald Chumley is the man who made the hit. Number seven, Hampton. I was still leading Wisconsin comfortably in the fourth quarter. UCLA, 14 to nothing of Oregon at halftime. Next week, you'll see UCLA at Arizona here on CBS. Starting at 12 noon with the NCAA today. Third down and eight yards to go. Lang and Dixon with the wide receivers. Pease with a short drop. And he completes it. Mateel has it, and he is racing down near the 30-yard line. Ricky Mateel stopped by Charlie Dean. The Florida Gators are on the move. They've got a first down and 10 yards to go at the 31-yard line. They run from that slot formation with three wide receivers. They're putting the teal on a little quick out. Dumps back, fires the ball, turns upfield. The teal's having a good day so far. Excellent job of the defensive back of keeping it from going for a score by Charlie Dean. Picked up 18 yards on the play. That's John L. Williams. He drives it on down for about five more to the 26-yard line. Donald Chumley in on the tackle. He from Savannah, Georgia. We are in the third quarter. We have the Mutual Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. Florida. Excuse me, Leslie. Florida's moving that ball again. They've got to come away with something other than a field goal. I mean, it's not going to hurt them, but they want to get a score on the board there to make them feel a little more productive. Mike O'Neill's under the wide receiver. Instead, they just leave it on the ground and move it straight ahead for a couple of yards onto the 24-yard line. Williams carried it, and it's going to be third down and about three yards to go at the 24. Chumley made the tackle. Interesting to sit here and observe that in the first half, Florida came out and threw the ball. They figured that's the only way that they could move the ball against Georgia. Well, what's happened is, as we said, it's as close to the second quarter. They were putting the ball on the ground, and that's what they're doing in this quarter. They're keeping the ball on the ground. Third down play now. Can they move it against the Georgia defense? Keith. Well, his receiver went down. His receiver was on the ground at the time that ball was thrown. Darrell Jones is covering Frankie Neal with the man who he's going to try to get it to. And the teal went down. The teal went down on the turf. He's just looking. He's looking for his receiver. He just lobs it up there. What happens is his receiver goes down right there. You can see him. He's on the ground. He and the defensive back, they get mixed up. They fall over each other's feet. There's no penalty involved. It was an honest mistake by both guys. Bobby Raymond's going to attempt the field goal here. This will be a 41-yarder. And holding will be Ray Criswell from the hash mark left. A 41-yard attempt. No good. It's wide. It is no good. So that Florida attempt has failed, and they come away with no points on the drive. So the score is still Florida 9 and Georgia 3. Nine minutes, 49 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. The beauty of a Delta faucet is when it's on, it's on. And when it's off, it's off. Its washerless design helps keep it from dripping. So it lasts and lasts and lasts. Delta Fawcett. We're first because we last. There's only one thing Rachel Stevens does well. Starting a boat isn't it. Stopping a boat isn't it either. What Rachel does well is drive. 
So well, she qualifies for Sentry Plain Talk Car Insurance, which rewards good drivers with good rates. So good, she has money to help pay for flying lessons. If you're a good driver, call Sentry, where all's well, even when all isn't. Florida and Georgia each have three current football players who won academic All-Southeastern Conference recognition last year, including Bulldog Rover Terry Hogue, just one of 30 SEC players to be an academic All-American the past 10 years. At the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, this is Lindsey Nelson with Jack Snow. We're in the third quarter, and Florida is leading Georgia by a score of 9-3. to three. Georgia has the ball. First down, 10 yards to go. They have it at their own 24-yard line, taking over on the missed field goal, the attempt by Florida. Last thing is the quarterback. Well, it completes the pass out into the flat to Fred Lane, number four. But it is no gain, really. Second down and 10 at the 24-yard line. Lost about a foot on the play on the completed pass. That's the Georgia sideline. The Georgia Red, the Red Coat marching back. <laughs> Symbolically chewing up a gator. That's last singer. Likes to run it and does as he gets across the 25 up to about the 27. Alonzo Johnson at the tackle. It'll be third and seven. Georgia wants to get more efficient at this. They're not having a lot of a success doing this. Florida shutting it down very good. You can see the linebackers from Florida. They're filling the holes very well. They're pursuing excellently. Georgia can't turn the corner. They, they want to turn the corner and get some big plays. They haven't been able to do that so far. Third and seven, McCluskey is the tailback. Young is the fullback. Last thing I has the ball. And he was hit just as he started the pass. Is it a fumble? Is it an incomplete pass? Incomplete. Incompleted pass. His arm that started forward. Wilbur Marshall was the man who got there. That's devastation, number 88. He's going to drop back here. He's going to look downfield. The receivers are a slot to the right. Lassinger's looking for his deep man. He wants to go deep right there. And here you go. Here comes Marshall. You see the hand going forward. Definitely a pass. No problem there. Good call by the official. So that makes it fourth down and seven yards to go. Hunter is in the ball game, and that's Chip Andrews. The ball is dropped back to field it for Florida. He is back about his own 27-yard line. The lights are on here at the Gator Bowl in the late afternoon. Andrews gets it off. Sibol takes a look. Comes up to make the catch at the 25. Side slips one or two. And struggles up to the 23-yard line. So that is where they will take over a 47-yard punt return, four yards. It is still Florida 9 and Georgia 3 with 8.22 to play in the third quarter. This is Mr. Goodwrench. Did you know the spark plugs in your GM car or truck make 8,000 explosions a minute? And each explosion depends on an exact amount of gasoline and air to make your car or truck perform right. So to make sure all those explosions happen precisely, get a professional tune-up by Mr. Goodwrench. We have quality GM parts, equipment, and training available. It's another of Mr. Goodwrench's good ways. To keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. Coors to you, the clean of it. Coors to you, the fresh of it. Coors to you, the best of it, the best of the the clean of the Rockies, the fresh of the Rockies. Brewed the Coors way, natural and pure. Coors to you, the clean of it. All night through the fresh of it. Rocky Mountain Gold, you got it. The best of the Rockies is yours. Wednesday, in an all-new CBS dramatic special, Mickey Rooney returns in his Emmy-winning role as Bill on his own. Being on my own is tougher than I thought. <laughs> Here the conclusion of today's CBS Sports NCAA football broadcast. Jack Snow and I will be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from each of the teams. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 check to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. The MVPs receive certificates from Chevrolet acknowledging their outstanding performances. First down and 10 yards to go at the 28-yard line for Wayne Peace and the Florida Gators. And Peace has the ball. 
Got to keep it. Heading for the sideline. Goes out of bounds after 34. Cantrell forced him out. Final score today was Auburn 35 and Maryland 23. So Auburn stays alive, of course. If that was not a conference game. And next week, Georgia plays Auburn in what will be a Southeastern Conference game. Last week, Florida lost to Auburn. Southeastern Conference race is really coming down to whatever. You could have all sorts of ties for the conference championship. Peace with the ball. Keeps it again. And again goes out of bounds this time at about the 43 or 4. Cantrell again ran him out of bounds. Cantrell is going sideline to sideline. Watch Wayne Pacer. He's going he's to roll out to his left. He's going to look downfield. Interestingly enough, they're going with only two wide receivers. He never really puts the ball up in the air like he's going to throw it. To me, that's a run all the way. But Georgia does know that, so therefore they got to drop back to take those deep outs and those deep goal patterns away from the receivers. The Keith rolled out with intention. I want to run it. Pace has carried three times for 30 yards. It's first down now, 10 yards to go, just short of the 44. Quick place to the tailback, Hampton. Lorenzo Hampton. At the 47 yard line. Picked up three on that one, will be second down and seven yards to go. Jake Richards and Tommy Thurston made the tackle. Florida has made an adjustment offensively at halftime. What they're doing now is they're coming out with their normal pro set, which is a tight end and two wide receivers. At the start of the game, they came out with three wide receivers, a slot to one side. They feel that they can run the ball against Georgia. That's why they're back to the normal pro set. Hampton's carried 15 times for 59 yards. Williams and Hampton in the set there now. Wayne Peace with the ball. Incomplete. Tried to get it out there to John L. Williams. Cantrell covering. It's going to be third down. Seven yards to go at the 47-yard line. Williams goes to the sideline. I think John L. on that last play, Lindsay, he was open, but uh, Peace put the ball just a little bit behind him there. Very difficult. John L. Williams, a stocky guy, 5'11", 216 pounds. Charlie Fell, the head coach of the Florida Gators. Joe Henderson is now in there at fullback. Hampton's the other setback. Wayne Peace with the ball. And completed out in the left flat across the 40 down to the 35 and on down to the 34 yard line to Joe Henderson, the fullback who just came into the ball again. 19 yard pickup on the play. First and 10 now for the far to get it. Tony Flack made the tackle. Henderson's going to come out of the backfield on that piece. He's going to drop straight back, look downfield. He's looking for Henderson all the way. Let's him have it. Nice concentration by Henderson. Turns up, puts a good move on right here. Nails, he lowers his shoulder, nails the defensive back, gets a couple extra yards. So as has happened so often here this afternoon, the Florida Gators are driving into Georgia territory, down to the 34-yard line, first and 10. Peace gives this one to uh, Lorenzo Hampton. He gets two yards down to the 32 to make it second down and eight yards to go, and Steve Burrows makes the tackle. Florida is leading by a score of 9-3 to three with 6 minutes, 46 seconds left in the third quarter. Calvin Ruff also in there on the last play. Holmes comes in there, Andre Holmes defensively. Look at that. Total yards. Part of 306, Georgia 96. It's unbelievable, Lindsay. That is just unbelievable. Second and eight at the 32-yard line. Florida and Georgia territory. He's throwing and completing it inside the 30-yard line. Taken by fullback Henderson again. And he slipped at the 20-yard line. That'll make it a first down and 10 yards to go. Florida at the Georgia 20, a 12-yard pickup on the play. And it is here that the Georgia defense has been able to rise to the occasion all afternoon. Nebraska scoring 59 points today. It doesn't surprise anybody anymore. As Rozier's stats, he is the leading candidate for the Heisman Trophy. What a day. He's had a lot of those this year. All right, first and 10, Florida. There have been no touchdowns in this game. They're all field goals. Florida 9, Georgia 3. This and it's tipped incomplete. Just trying to get the soft touch out there to Williams and Gary Cantrell. Got a hand on it and deflected. It will be second down and 10 yards to go at the 20-yard line. Take a look at it again here now. Williams got him beat. 
He's going to beat Peace, just kind of pulls the string just a little bit on this. He tries to float it right over the linebacker. Watch down to the bottom. There it is. He's got his receiver open. Just a little short. Great individual effort by Georgia, though. Peace is 16 for 25, 171 yards, and one interception today. Second and 10 at the 20-yard line. Peace, short drop. Puts it up again down the other side. And this time it's intercepted by Georgia. Out of bounds at the two-yard line for Darrell Jones. Darrell Jones, number 17, intercepted it. Stepped out of bounds immediately at the two-yard line. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. And again, Florida drives, gains yardage, and doesn't score. It's going to be marked just outside the one-yard line. He's going to Dixon on this one. It's a quick go. Dixon stumbles coming out of his stance, which allows Daryl Jones to be all alone there. He looks like the receiver. Great concentration by Daryl Jones. He tries to stay in bounds right here. Another, no, another good job by the gate or by the Bulldogs. Chevrolet taking charge. Chevrolet Caprice Classic. The only full-size car picked last year by Car and Driver magazine as one of the 10 best cars you can buy. Chevrolet Caprice. Compare the deep cushion comfort, the luxury, the ride, the full-sized room. It's an exceptional value. You can spend more for a car, but why in the world would you? Chevrolet! And you. Here comes the all-time favorite on a sesame seed bun. He's McDonald's Big Mac. He's always been number one. He's the leader of the pack. McDonald's Great Big Mac. Two pure beef patties, lettuce pickles going in. Special sauce is a hit. Gotta give him a spin. Mellow cheese melting down, down. He's at the top of the charts, all over town. Leader of the pack, Big Mac. McDonald's and you. Well, it's a happy gang of Bulldogs, especially the Bulldog is intercepted and pulled that pass in. Well, Jones. Ball is spotted outside the one-yard line. Last thing is the quarterback giving it up. They're just trying to get a little running room if they can. Scott Williams got the handoff, moved it out to the three. It'll be second down and eight yards to go there. Mark Corp came in to make the tackle. Bulldogs, of course, are happy about that last play and getting above because they realize that although they're way down in the stats, they still trail by only six points from Morgan. Florida nine, Georgia three, 5 21 to play in the third quarter. Last singer, the quarterback. Motion all the way across. Last singer with the ball. Across the five, across the 10, first down, across the 15. First and 10 at the 19 yard line. John Lastinger carrying Tim Newton finally brought him down. 16-yard pickup for Lastinger, keeping on the play. Lastinger's going to run this option again. Here he cut. Now he cuts back. Everybody's flowing to the right. Lastinger comes back to the left because he 59 has overrun it. Good run by Lastinger. Takes him out of a hole, gets him in good field position. Big, big play for the Bulldogs. He's carried eight times for 39 yards. He broke his shoelace on the last play, indicated that the sideline is broken. They said play with it. No time is taken, and he's ready to go on a first down. Here's a pitch. Gets it to the tail back, McCluskey. McCluskey gets across to the 22-yard line. A reminder, tomorrow in National Football League action on CBS Sports, there's all sorts of action, starting with the NFL today, Atlanta, New Orleans, Dallas at Philadelphia, Tampa Bay at Minnesota, St. Louis at Washington. Check your local listing for the game and the time in your station. At the 22-yard line, it is second down and six yards to go. Evan Archie's in the far right. The last thing is still quarterback. Gives it to his tailback, Dennis McCluskey. David McCluskey was top of the defense, led by Fred McAllister. And by Tim Newton. Here's the final score. Texas defeated Houston 9-3. So the Texas Longhorns roll on. They have won 11 state Southwest Conference games and appear headed for the Cotton Bowl on January 2nd. SMU is leading Rice 20-6 in the fourth quarter. Double receivers to the right side now. Archie and Harris are over there. Third down and four yards to go. Pass Singer completes it out in the right flat. And it's advanced to the 30 by Randy Clark. Archie took the pass and advanced it to the 30-yard line. Now they'll look for the possible first down. He may have picked it up. 
You know, I'm kind of surprised at that play. I'm not at the play. I'm kind of surprised the officials have been sitting here looking at it. It looks as if that outside receiver, Harris, number 20, is going to pick the inside back, who's supposedly supposed to cover Herman Archie. First down and 10 yards to go at the 30-yard line for the Georgia Bulldogs. Archie's in the wide left, and timeout's called by Lastinger. Lastinger got up there and turns and calls a timeout to charge this one to the Georgia Bulldogs. Three minutes, nine seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter at the neutral Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. The National Football Foundation and Hall of Fame each year honors scholar athletes, athletes who are outstanding in the classroom as well as on the football field, and we'd like to acknowledge them too. A future dinner will be given to honor these scholar athletes. These awards have been given since 1959. From Stanford, John Bergen. From Notre Dame, Mike Favorite. From Ohio State, John Frank. From Georgia, Terry Hogue, who has not played in this ball game here today so far. From West Virginia, Jeff Hostet, the outstanding quarterback. From Michigan, Stephen Humphreys. From Air Force, Jeff Kubiak. From Duke, Bill Abramski. From SMU, Brian O'Mara. From Syracuse, Tony Romano. And from BYU, the outstanding Steve Young. All have distinguished themselves as athletes and as scholars, and we salute them one and all. Now at the 30-yard line, it is first down and 10 yards to go. Georgia in possession. Last thing is still quarterbacking. Late pitch. McCluskey had it for a moment, fumbled it, and the scramble is on, and Georgia retains possession. David McCluskey was the man. Alan Johnson made the hit, shook him loose. But Georgia retains possession, and there was no gain on the play. He's an eye on number 93, Alonzo Johnson. He does a great job here. He's not the bottom of your screen. He fights off the block right there. You see 93 taking the blocker on, and he's also going to take that pitch man. As soon as he reads last year, he lets the blocker go, comes in there and grabs the tailback. Great job. Great job by Alonzo Johnson. Second down and 10 yards to go. Last thing are rolling and looking. Wants to throw back on the screen and he got to Clarence K is tight end. K has got it 35, 40, 45, K 50. K outside and goes to the 45-yard line of Florida. First down and 10 yards to go for the dog. They held the ball at the gate at 45. It was Curtis Stacy who made the stop. 25-yard pickup on the throwback to the tight end. We got a flag down there on the field. They're going to call unnecessary roughness on one of the Gators. When the tight end was going down, when K was down, one of the Gators came by and happened to just bump him. Just watch the Gator. Here he goes. He's going to roll out to his right, throw the screen back across the field. Well, let's watch K run. Runs well for a big man, picks up his blocking very nice. Now he starts to cut back across the green, and he almost breaks it right there. He almost breaks it, but goes down. Now watch the Gator man coming in. Well, we didn't see him, but he's big penalty of 15 yards. Puts the ball on the 30 yard line of Florida. Personal foul on the defense. That's on Florida. Gives Georgia the ball. First and 10 at the 30 yard line. Keep in mind now that Georgia is trailing by only six points. Nine to six is the score. It's all been field goals. Two minutes, 12 seconds remaining in the third quarter. First and 10 now, Georgia at the Florida 30-yard line. John Lasting of the quarterback. Gives it to Barry Young, it's fullback. He's just wedging him out and trying to get up there. He does for five yards to the 25-yard line. It'll be second down and five yards to go as Barry Young carries for five and four. Greg Cleveland brought him down. Now. Charlie Pell a little concerned, the Florida coach. Can his defense reciprocate and do the same thing that the Georgia defense has been doing all afternoon? Can it stiffen and hold when the drive gets down this close? Second down and five yards to go. Last singer, Barry Young. Well, he got four that time. He's going to be a yard short. It's going to be third down and a yard to go. And it was Patrick Miller who made the stop. Young has carried nine times for 40 yards today. Third down and one yard to go. Georgia's ball at the Florida 21. Charlie Pell, the head coach. Georgia's not doing anything fancy. They're just taking that big offensive line, McIntyre, Gray, Anderson, and Brown, and running straight ahead at the Gators. They're being very successful at it right now. Scott Williams is in that fullback. McCluskey moves to a left set. Collision, and last thing, it kept it and went down. A collision there. Uh, Scott Williams was starting to cross in motion. 
happens here is Young, the fullback, looks like he bumps into Lastinger right there. Bang. He knocks him down. Creates a, you know, a misplay. They can't get the play rolling. Can't have those things. Not down this area. Fourth and two at the 22. That's Vince Dooley, the head coach of Georgia. They're going to go on fourth and two now. They trail by six points, and they're going to try a fourth and two. Last thing has got it. First down for the dog. Last thing. Kept the football, and he followed Young in there. So the drive is kept alive at the 18-yard line. Here we go. They come in motion to draw the defense to the left, and Lastinger's going to keep it. You watch him. He's going to stay with it all the way. Excellent job by John Lastinger. Big play man. First and 10 at the 18. The clock is ticking. 10 seconds remaining in the third quarter. They'll get this one off, I think, and that'll be it. Lastinger riding and keeping. Lastinger gets to the 15 and inside the 15 to the 14-yard line, and time has run out. He picked up four yards. It'll be second and six. Wilbur Marshall made the stop. And that's the end of the third quarter. Our score is Florida 9, Georgia 3. Florida versus Georgia is an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports. We'll be back with fourth quarter action after this message and a word from your local station. To earn the name Marathon is to overcome a grueling array of endurance tests. Now from Xerox, the 1020 Marathon Copier. A desktop copier with advanced microelectronics and features you'd expect to find on larger copiers. The most inexpensive copier Xerox has ever introduced is built to run and run and run. The 1020, smallest of the marathon copiers from Xerox. Official sponsor of the 1984 Summer Olympics. Precise measurements, perfect fits, flawless surfaces. General Motors employees are committed to giving you nothing less. And when the shift ends, their drive for quality continues. Because GM people sign up to take one of the cars home to evaluate. This kind of extra involvement helps build better cars. Nobody sweats the details like GM. This is CBS. Andy Trotter Pontiac is sale pricing the new 84s as fast as they come in. Imagine owning this beautiful new 84 Pontiac for just $59.88 or lease it with no down payment just $116 a month. And take a look at this new 84 Bonneville. You won't find a lower priced GM car offering this much size, comfort, and luxury. And Andy Trotter has them sale priced ready for immediate delivery at just $97.88. And be sure you see the exciting new mid-engine Fiero at Chattanooga's Automotive Headquarters, Andy Trotter Pontiac. When you want to have a pizza, you want to have a pizza now. Introducing Godfather's Pizza, delivered from our door to yours. Hot, boxed, and ready to go. Hot, boxed, and ready to go. When you just got to have pizza, pick up the phone. Tell us how you want it. We'll deliver it. Hot, boxed, and ready. On time. Our door to yours, we deliver. Godfather's Pizza. At the gate of Ole in Jacksonville, Florida, one of the great rivalries in college football here on CBS. Georgia and Florida, and Florida's leading 9-6, 9-3 it is. However, the Georgia Bulldogs have been able to move the ball lately on the ground. They have it down at the 14-yard line, where it's second down and six yards to go. Young and McCluskey are the eyebacks. Young moves it inside the 10 and down to the 9-yard line. Wilbur Marshall made the tackle at the 9. Florida's claiming that they recovered a fumble. All this is a little little cross buck right here, a little trap. Last is going to turn around and hand off. Here comes the fullback. Good blocking up in the interior line. He puts his head down. He gets inside the 10-yard line. Georgia's doing the basics, the things that are successful for them now. They weren't set, they were not successful in the first half, but they stuck with it, and now they're beginning to turn for the Bulldogs. Third down and one yard to go. Big play here. Georgia trails by six points. They have the ball at the Florida nine-yard line. We're in the fourth quarter. Young, first down. First and goal at the five-yard line for Barry Young. Randy Clark made the tackle with Bruce Vaughn. Vince Dooley. Watching the play from the sideline. 
That's it, and Barry Young did just that. All right, Vince. All right, Vince. I love it. I love it. Little body English from the head coach. 15th play in this series coming up. And this drive coming up. Last thing has still got it. And he has stopped at the one-yard line. Last thing into the one. It'll be second down and goal. It's closer than the one, actually, about the one-foot line. Here he comes with their basic play now. They're going to fake a little pullback dive, and he's going to keep coming right off tackle, put, tuck that ball away, get all he can. Good job by Lassner. Great technician, great leader for the Bulldogs. He's carried 12 times for 50 yards. Okay, second down. And goal to go. Husky moves over. Young's the fullback. Young's got it. Touchdown! Side. Kevin Butler hasn't missed a conversion this year. He's 23 for 23. It's a 9-9 tie. He'll try to put the Bulldogs out in front. And it's good. Georgia 10, Florida 9. Take a look at this. A straight ahead dive by the fullback. Here comes Young. Boom. He just burrows his way in there. Great job. He, he smelled that end zone. He wanted that end zone. Another angle over here. We see last year hanging off to Young. Here he comes. He's looking for the hole. He finds it. He just wants a seam now. He just wants a little area. He finds the area and bur burrows it in. Watch Vince here. All right, Vince, be cool now. That, that's it, Vince. Yes, I love it. I love it. Good job, Vince. Bulldogs back on top. John Houseman for the investment firm of Smith Barney. Whatever happened to that old-fashioned American work ethic? Some people still have it. The investment firm of Smith Barney has it. They know how much digging it takes to uncover one good stock, one good bond. And that's why they're among a handful of top investment firms singled out for their work in research. Smith Barney. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. Chevy Tuck is taking charge. Moisture and road salt are murder on a pickup. But tough Chevy S10 comes with built-in corrosion-fighting zinc-coated steel to help guard against rust. While Ford Ranger uses about 93 square feet, Chevy S10 gives you almost three times more zinc-treated steel, about 277 square feet. For year-round protection, Chevy S10's got you covered with tough corrosion-fighting steel. Chevy Tuck is taking charge. Ain't room, but for one mean reputation round here. For six hours in November. Cheap on CBS. This crowd of more than 80,000 at the Gator Bowl is really alive here now as we have 13 minutes, 18 seconds to play. Georgia leads for the first time today, 10 to 9. Kevin Butler's going to kick it off. Georgia has dropped back Hampton and Sibal and Henderson. They've got three of them deep back there this time. And I would suspect, Jack Snow, that we're going to see Wayne Peace go into action when Florida gets that ball. Uh, I would think so, no question of it. The best thing that Florida does is they throw that ball, they put it in the air every down if they have to. There is 13 minutes and 18 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. But Wayne's main forte is is the pass. Let's see if he comes out and holds two for him. Butler puts it up. Goes into the end zone. That makes it a touchback. So it'll come out first and ten at the 20-yard line. So Florida takes over 80 yards away from the Georgia goal line. There is the drive. Young scoring on the one-yard run. Peace now will quarterback Florida as he has all day. He is 16 for 26. 171 yards and two interceptions. Wayne Peace. Lindsay, you realize how, how tough it is to go 99 yards without a fumble or an interception, a bad snap, something happening. Great job by the Bulldogs. Exactly what they did. All right, they get it to the tailback on the draw, and that is Hampton. Hampton gets two yards after the 22 to make it second down and eight yards to go, and Calvin Ruff made the tackle. So they leave it on the ground on first down. They're going to test them. They're going to see if they can still get a few yards at four, five, six yards in the first crack. 
If they can't, you can bet they're going to put that ball in the air, and they will do that. Hampton has carried 17 times today for 64 yards. Charlie Pell along the sideline. Realizing that 13 minutes is a long time. Time enough for everything to happen, and it might happen to this crowd. Wayne Peace. Wayne Peace running out of the pocket. Going to take the loss. Back there at the 19-yard line. Charlie said that's better than putting it up and losing it. Mike Weaver was the man putting the pressure on to making the tackle, along with Kenneth Sam. We've seen both coaches on the sidelines, and, and both men like to present themselves as low-keyed and fairly composed, which they are. Look at Coach here. He's, you know, he's maintaining his composure, but he's eating eight pieces of gum. With a paper on that last one. That's right. It's third down and 11 yards to go at the 19-yard line. Third down conversion, 7 of 11. Dropping back his piece. Camling wants to get out there for first down yardage if he possibly can. But Mike Weaver is trying to cut him off at the pass. That was a third and 11 play, and Peace was trying to get to the first down six, staying in bounds longer than he ordinarily would have, but he didn't make it. It's going to be fourth down. And so the Gators turned on the punting unit, and it's Ray Criswell in to do the punting. He can boot him. Jimmy Har Harrell has dropped back to receive it for the Georgia Bulldogs. Harrell at the 28. Sides up the tackler, crosses the 30, and moves to the 32-yard line. First to 10 to 32, Billet made the tackle, Rodney Billet. So, it is Georgia 10, Florida 9, 11 minutes, 43 seconds left to play in the football game in Jacksonville. Avis has the fastest way for you to return your car and get this record of your rental charges without waiting at the counter. I'll prove it. Our new Avis rapid return is as easy to use as your pocket calculator. You just punch in your car number, your mileage, your gas gauge reading. In less than a minute, out comes a record of your rental charges. Try our new Avis rapid return. It's another Avis first. It's fast, it's easy, and it's only at Avis. The American Football Coaches Association endorses ethical recruiting standards and supports the student-athlete search for academic and athletic excellence. Join the AFCA's efforts to support and practice ethical conduct in recruitment of student-athletes. It's exciting college football here on CBS, and the Georgia Bulldogs have the ball first down. Ten yards to go. They have it at their own 32. John Lastinger is still the quarterback. It's Charlie Pell, the Florida coach. Young and Williams. Setbacks in the ball game. Motion across. That's Williams. It's to Young. He moved it out to the 39-yard line. He picked up seven yards on the play, and it'll be second down and three as Alonzo Johnson made the tackle. Jack Snow, as far as George is concerned, now they're in front by a point. It's a different ball game. Exactly. The one point, but the, the style of offense that Georgia has is, is suited for, for where the game is right now. They're a ball control team. They keep it on the ground. They eat up the clock. Let's see what happens. Archie's in a wide left. Williams goes out to a wing right. That's Williams in motion going all the way across. That's Barry Young with the football, trying to get to the first down six. Looked as though he might have missed by a few inches. Going to be spotted about the 41 and a half. Mark Corp came in to make the tackle. Well, the final, of course, was Auburn 35 and uh, Maryland 23. Non-conference game for Auburn, but a big win for them nonetheless. SMU beat Rice by a score of 20 to 6. TCU and Texas Tech in a 10-10 tie, and that's the final. And the University of Southern Mississippi won big. Third down and a yard to go. McCuskey and Young are the backs. Williams in motion. Young got the first down. First and 10 for the Georgia Bulldogs at their own 44-yard line. 
Keith Johnson throwing a block there that wakes him out a little bit for Barry Young. All right, final. Colorado 34, Kansas 23. Kansas State 21, Oklahoma State 20. Hey, that is a mild upset. UCLA beat Oregon 14 to nothing, and on CBS next week, you'll see UCLA at Arizona in a big one. I'll start at 12 noon with the NCAA today, next week. Reverse, reverse play, and coming wide is Lane, and Fred Lane has got the football. He's at the 40, 35, Lane is at the 30, and Lane, on the end around, has moved it to the 23-yard line of Florida. three-yard pickup on the gadget play. We asked Georgia the other day when we were there if they had gadget plays, and they said, oh, yes. Oh, yes, we've got them. George Hatton said, just be alert. We might run a little reverse. Here we go. Last is rolling out to his left. He clips the ball out to number four lane. Lane's quick. Watch his feet. He's heading upfield. He's looking downfield for the block and tries to cut back inside. Successful. Great big play for Georgia. Last thing with the football. Keeps it inside the 20 and continues to drive down to the 17-yard line. Wilbur Marshall finally made the tackle. Georgia trying to put it away, as it were, here. Charlie Pell, a very interested spectator along the sideline. Florida's got to stop them here. They can go ahead and give up, you know, a field goal to Georgia, but they don't want to give them a touchdown because then they got to come back and make two scores. If you give up a field goal, Florida can come back with the ball, score a touchdown, and move ahead. This is very important right now for the Florida Gators. The officials have called a timeout. Robert Aldea indicates that it is an official timeout for an injured player being assisted off for Florida. When players are doomed, it'll be second down and four yards to go at the 17. Going off the field is Roy Harris, Winter Garden, Florida. In the third quarter, Pittsburgh 14 and Notre Dame 6. Coming back, Lindsay. We're coming back. Slowly, we're coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is conclusive in the third quarter. At the 17-yard line now, Georgia with the ball. Give it in close and inside the 10-yard line go the Georgia Bulldogs with Young Carey. Fullback Barry Young got it inside to the 8. Vito McKeever made the stop. That's a great blocker here by Anderson, the center, Brown, and Gray, the guards. You watch the fullback, Barry Young. He hits right up in there. There's a hole. He never breaks stride until he gets past the line of scrimmage into the, into the linebacker territory. Great job of blocking by that interior three for the Georgia team. First down and goal to go. Georgia at the Florida eight-yard line. Williams in motion across. Last thing is still with the ball. Got only to the six before he was closed off. It'll be second down and goal to go at the six-yard line. And it was Wilbur Marshall in there to make the tackle. Eight minutes, 42 seconds left to play in the game. 8.42 to play. Georgia 10 and Florida 9. More than 80,000 fans jammed into the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida for this classic contest. They began playing in 1933 at the neutral site. Real back. McCluskey, he got to the three-yard line, maybe a little closer than that. McCluskey made the dive. That is Stacy made the stop. Now it's going to be spotted at the three-yard line. Third a little, little pitch here by last. You're going to put the ball out there to McCluskey. McCluskey's going to try and get off tackle. Watch him leave his feet and get in the air. He wants to get all he can. He wants that first down. Good effort by McCluskey. Third down and goal for Georgia at the Florida three-yard line. Seven minutes, 50 seconds left to play in the game. Young and McCluskey of a setback. McCluskey, McCluskey did not get in. Got to the one-yard line. And it was Randy Clark who made the stop. It'll be fourth down and goal at the one-yard line. What do we do? Do we go for the field goal? Do we go for the touchdown? Well, from the sideline, they said go for it for the touchdown. That's why last thing I went back, sort of clapping his hands back to the huddle. They got the word from Vince Dooley along the sideline. But that's Georgia football. Georgia does this. They don't have the one yard line. They think they got to go for it. Young and McCluskey have a setback. Fourth down, goal to go. Last thing I, and he did not make it. He did not make it. The ball goes over. Florida has held and Florida takes the ball. Mike Clark made the stop. Well, 
see their basic play again. He's going to come down. He's going to fake the hand off to the fullback, pull it back, and he's going to try and get off tackle. The whole left side of the Florida line stacks everybody up. The offensive line, the blockers, there's nowhere for Lassinger to go. Superb job by the Florida defense. Absolutely superb, and they take the ball just about a foot away from the goal line. He's up there now, the quarterback. From the end zone, he passes out into the right flat and gets it out to the five-yard line. As they went to the air and got it out there to B. Lane. Pass is complete to B. Lane. Shows you the confidence that they have in their quarterback, Wayne Peace. The ball is on about the six-inch line, and they come out throwing. Second and five at the five-yard line. B. Lang with the receiver. Florida is leading. Uh, Florida, Georgia is leading by a score of 10 to 9. The Florida Gators have the ball, and they trail by a point. That time they handed it off to Hampton. He's been the workhorse on the ground today for Florida, and he got it up there to about the eight-yard line. It's going to be third down and about two yards to go. That is Hampton, number seven. This just may be the biggest play of the ball game. It's third down and three. They haven't been real successful in their third down conversion ratios, but they definitely have to get this one because they don't want to give the ball back up to Georgia. Not in just field position, which it would be on a punt. Peace, short drop, and it's battered up into the air, incomplete, incomplete. He's trying to get it to Dixon. Cantrell is the man who batted it down, and the punting unit comes on now the Gators. They have to give it up. I kind of question this a little bit. Wayne is thrown in double coverage. He's looking at him all the way. He's going to stay with his receiver all the way. There's two guys from Georgia sitting over there. Bounces off the helmet. Look at that. What a shot. Cantrell. Punt formation now, and Chriswell is in to do the punting. Harold is back to receive it. Harold has called for a fair catch at his own 47. Fair catch. So it's back in Georgia territory, and the Bulldogs have it first and 10 to their own 47 on a 45-yard punt by Chriswell. It is still Georgia 10, Florida 9. Five minutes, 37 seconds left to play in the game. When people pump their own gas, they sometimes forget to check things. So when they come in for service... Mr. Goodwrench, there's something wrong. Well, let's take a look. Mr. Goodwrench knows your GM car. He has the right tools and the right GM training available to spot your problems fast. Mr. Goodwrench? Nothing serious. Just oh. needs a tune-up. By the way, your oil is low. Here's how to check. Keep that great GM feeling. With Mr. Goodwrench. With genuine GM parts. He's only three, and already he's reaching out, seeking, and looking to you to point the way. Now is when a Texas Instruments home computer can give him a real head start. With more educational cartridges than any other computer, they challenge, encourage, make learning fun. The home computer from Texas Instruments. Don't put it off. Quarterback Rick Neuheisel takes UCLA one step closer to the Rose Bowl. They face Pac-10 rival Arizona. NCAA football next Saturday on CBS Sports. Next week, UCLA versus Arizona, and at 12 noon Eastern, you'll see the NCAA today. And on air, Parsegian's inside football. I think you'll be interested in this. On today's game with Miami, Howard Schnellenberger, the Miami coach, was wired. And so we have everything that transpired between Schnellenberger and his staff. It's the kind of thing that is inside football, and Errol will be able to tell you a lot about that. It's a great situation. You get, it's a great time to learn because the coaches are constantly communicating back and forth from the box to the sidelines. You'll be able to tell if the plays head down to the field from the box are successful or not. Okay, first and ten now for Georgia. They have the ball at their own 47. They're leading by a single point. A singer handing it off. Barry Young gets across the 50-yard line and down to the 49-yard line. Roy Harris in to make the tackle, along with Mark Thorpe. It'll be second down and eight yards to go for the Bulldogs. We know what they're going to do here now. They're just going to keep that ball on the ground. We're going to see Young up the middle. We're going to see a little uh, uh, blasting and rolling out to his right, probably keeping the ball. We're going to and eat up the clock. David McCluskey is the tailback, and Barry Young is the fullback. Last thing is still the quarterback. 
There's McCarthy. He got it inside the 45 yard line of Florida. Alonzo Johnson made the tackle. Alonzo Johnson made the tackle for the Gators. And of about six on the play, it'll be third down and two yards to go. Third quarter, UCLA is leading Oregon by a score of 21 to nothing. Next week, UCLA against Arizona. With four minutes, 39 seconds left. Lindsay, is Georgia in their four-down territory yet? You know, Coach Dooley says, most of it, is it the 40-yard line or the 45? This is four down to him. <laughs> We're going to find out, aren't we? This is third and two. Very young. Now, did he pick it up? He's very, very close. They'll have to spot this one and take a look. Fred McAllister was the man in there on the stop. Very young, Terry. Very young. May have picked it up. They're going to need a measurement on that one, I believe. Yeah. Robert Adier, the referee, says bring out the chain. You know, we have talked about the various things that could happen in the Southeastern Conference race and that it could end in a four-way tie, for one thing. And uh, there could be all sorts of confusion. A very simple way it could win would be for Georgia to win here today and win next week, and there would be no confusion at all. Because Georgia would win and go to the Sugar Bowl. It is short. It's short. Fourth down. It is short. Fourth down. That's the 42. So let's see. You're Vince Dooley and you have a one point lead. Now we're going to have to hold up play because the smoke bomb has been thrown out onto the field. One of the stadium policemen is out there to see what he can do about that. Charlie Pell looking off the sideline. Smoke bomb is being removed from the premises. Last thing I have the word from the sideline, and I think the word is go for it. It must be. He's staying in there. The punting unit is not in. Fourth down, less than a yard to go. You've got the ball at the Florida 42 yard line. You lead by a single point, and you're not going to punt it. You're going to try to pick it up. So it is fourth down territory. Young is the man they've called on a number of cases. Young's got it. He only needed inches. And it looks from here as though he made it. But they'll unstack him again and look. Robert Allier looks and says, first down for the Georgia Bulldogs. So it's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. The clock is rolling. Three minutes and 48 seconds remain to be played in this football game. Georgia 10 and Florida 9. Georgia has five consecutive wins. Over Florida in this series. Young in motion to the outside. McCluskey gets the football. McCluskey. Ridden out of bounds just about the line of scrimmage. Or no game. Call it second and ten at the 42-yard line. Big Wilbur Marshall. Who's played an outstanding game. Wilbur Marshall. Watching the two coaches on the sideline. Coach Pell, he's beginning to get a little nervous right now. Here he goes. He knows the time is running out. On the other hand, Coach Dooley for Georgia. He looks quietly confident because things are going to his way of thinking. He's got the ball. He's in a ball control team. He's got a one-point lead, and a one point to him at this stage of the game when his offense is as good as a ten-point lead. So there, he's pretty happy with that right now. That was a loss of a yard and a half on the last play, so actually it's second like about 11 and a half at the 43 and a half yard line. Young's got the ball. He gets it to the 40. Barry Young to the 40-yard line. It's going to be third down and eight yards to go. Greg Cleveland was in there to make the stop. Third down, eight to go. Timeout, Florida. Timeout for the Florida Gators. It'll be third and eight for Georgia, so the Gators have called the timeout. The clock is stopped with three minutes, 18 seconds left to play in the game, and the score is Georgia 10 and Florida 9. More celebrity excitement. Eurosport. The new front drive celebrity Eurosport. Special F41 sports suspension straightens out curves in a car that looks as special as it feels. Eurosport. Move into more celebrity. Eurosport. A touch of Europe at a Chevrolet price. Chevrolet. And you. Taking charge. Mike McCabe ran his first long-distance race. He didn't finish first, but he sure did finish. Looks like a stroll light night. Looks like a stroll light night. Looks like a stroll light night. 
When things are going right, looks like the Strolite night. Strolite, a great tasting beer that doesn't fill you up. Hey, that's me, guys. Looks like Strolite night when good times come along. Next weekend, the Remsen Stakes, the 1983 World Figure Skating Champion, the World Cup Acrobatics Championship, plus John Madden's Journeys on CBS Sports Saturday. Third down and eight yards to go for the Georgia Bulldogs at the Florida 40-yard line. Georgia is leading by a score of 10 to 9. Last thing, a quarterback to Georgia Bulldogs for most of the ball game. Williams was in, but briefly in the first half. Last thing has been in entirely in the second half. Big third down play. The crowd is on its feet. McCluskey, I beg your pardon. It's not McCluskey, it's Montgomery. Montgomery has stopped at the 37-yard line. He picked up three. It's going to be fourth down and five yards to go, and Wilbur Marshall made the stop at Charlie Town. Harris and Marshall on the last stop. Fourth down and five yards to go. Georgia at the Florida. 37-yard line. Last finger talking to his sideline. The board of strategy. Roy Hafner is the offensive coordinator. Last thing has gone back into that huddle, number 12. He had an injury, tore up a knee on the last day of spring practice in the spring game. Henley Mark has been thrown. Had a knee operation, was immobilized for seven weeks, and then came out and started the opening game against UCLA when the regular season started. Chip Andrews, the punter, is on the field now. Dead ball. Could you repeat that one more time? Violation of 25 second count. Offense, still fourth down. Delay of game, the first penalty. First penalty against the Georgia Bulldogs. Delay of game. Now Andrews is in to do the punting. The ball is dropped back, standing at his own 10 yard line. Gators want that football one more time. Georgia is leading by a score of 10 to 9, 228 on the clock. Andrews gets the snap. Fair catch signal for Sibal, but uh, does not make the fair catch. However, it is in the end zone, and a penalty marker is dropped down there. Two penalty markers are dropped down there. Touchback is indicated, a 43-yard punt. It'll be first and 10 at the 20-yard line for the Florida Gators. He leaves the batting in the end zone. Touchback. That's why the penalty marker was dropped. It is illegal batting, and that is a penalty, but the penalty, of course, is simply lost to the ball in the end zone, which is a touchback first and 10 at the 20-yard line. There goes Charlie for another stick of gum. He's sending out for some gum. He reached into his pocket. There wasn't any left. Oh, he's got a piece in his mouth. He's okay. Hampton and Williams. Now the backs in there with Wayne Peace. Wayne Peace rolling and looking and keeping. Sliding out of bounds on the far side at about the 22-yard line. Knox Culpepper was there. Keep in mind that in this game last year, Florida came in with high expectations. It was a big game. It was billed as a big game. And Florida actually was embarrassed because Georgia, with Herschel Walker, won it by a score of 44 to nothing. Florida came in here this afternoon hoping to avenge for that. They led for most of the ball game. They are trailing now by one point, 10 to 9, and the clock says 2.03. Second down and eight yards to go. Florida's ball at their own 22. Lying and Dixon, the wide receivers. Here is a pitch to Hampton. And Hampton can't get to the line of scrimmage. He's dropped at the 19-yard line for a loss of three. Weaver, Mike Weaver was the man who made the tackle. So it's going to be third down, about ten and a half. Quick pitch right here. He just tosses out to his tailback. Weaver comes in and makes a great play. He cuts right in behind all the blockers. There he is. Excellent job. Excellent job by the Georgia defense. A minute and a half to play. Third down coming up. Third and ten and a half. He's dropping back, looking, and he is dropped. And again, it's big Freddie Gilbert, the great defensive lineman, Freddie Gilbert. Freddie 
Gilmer, one of the outstanding defensive linemen in this country in college football. He's played a whale of a game, and Florida has called a timeout. Brady is what they call their rush in. On passing situations, he will not drop back into coverage, so that's why you see him here. Comes in and he forces peace, wraps both arms around and throws him down. Great, big play. Big play. Way to hustle. Good job by Gilbert. Keep in mind now that many important games are being played around the country. And at the conclusion of this one, we go to New York and Brendan Arrow will bring you up to date with scores and highlights of other big games all around the country. And also we left some bonus coverage for you of the game between Pittsburgh and Notre Dame. So at the conclusion of this game, stay with us as we'll bring you up to date on the college football scene all around the country. Then bonus coverage of Pitt and Notre Dame, which will be in progress at that time. College football on CBS, and this has been a tremendous football game here this afternoon. The annual Georgia-Florida game, one of the great rivalries in the history of collegiate football. I'll tell you, Lindsay, this is my first Georgia-Florida game, and I have I, I have never seen anything so exciting. Not only there on the football field, but in the stands yesterday, the day before, the whole buildup leading up to this ball game. The people have not shut up since the time they walked into the to the stadium about 10:30 this morning. If you think this is exciting, wait do you try to get a cab to the airport. <laughs> That's really exciting. Fourth down and 19 yards to go. The ball is on the 11 yard line. One minute, eight seconds left to play in the game. So with the Florida Gators, this is about it. He's stopping back. He's in the end zone. He's still in the end zone. Throws it out there. And it's on a hop. The ball goes over. On the 11 yard line, first and 10 for the Georgia Bulldogs. Hampton was the intended receiver. Although Pease had to get rid of it, he was in the end zone and was squirting with a safety. Pandemonium on the field and in the stands. It's a happy gang of dogs. A dejected gang of Florida Gators and their coach, Charlie Pell. Interesting. Interesting, Lizzie. On that play, they didn't start the clock. It was about 101 when that play started. That was 108. 108. But 108, and it's down to 101, and on the incompletion, it stopped. What I meant to say was, did you know that that play took seven <laughs> seconds to run, Lindsay? <laughs> so now, the Bulldogs have the ball at the 11-yard line of Florida. First and 10, last thing I got for quiet. Moves the backs up. He's just going to go down. He does. Just hits the deck. Took a loss of a yard or so. Timeout now once again. Florida stops the clock. I think that's their third timeout. I think you're right. And so the ball will be spotted there when play is resumed outside the 13-yard line. You don't have to wait, Mom. You can go home. Peter, you're the first person in this family that's gone off to college. I can wait. When the Travelers insures a father's life, it's really his children's future we're insuring. So if anything happens to him, his dreams won't also die. There are more prominent people the Travelers insures, but none more important. Look at me. Do you like what you see? Good, because it's not me. It's a recording of me on Mimrex videotape. This remarkable tape has been recorded and re-recorded 100 times, but I bet you still couldn't tell if it was Mimrex or me, which really isn't me. It's Mimrex, Mimrex videotape. Even after 100 recordings, you'll wonder, is it live or is it Mimrex? Georgia Bulldogs are just about to be 8-0-1. The one was a tie with Clemson early in the year. 52 seconds left to play. You may recall at halftime, we remarked on the fact that Georgia had only 46 yards rushing. In the second half, Georgia has had 139 yards rushing, and Florida has had 52. Ball is spotted outside the 13-yard line. It'll be second down and about 12 and a half yards to go. When play is resumed here, 52 seconds on that clock. Frustrating afternoon for Charlie Pell. It really is, Lindsay. He's been down there. He's got three field goals. He kicked a fourth. They missed a, another field goal. He hadn't scored a touchdown. He's got to be able to put that ball across. He is frustrated. Georgia, again, if that was last thing I read, is to take it and hit the deck. And he does. And when that knee goes down, of course, the play stop. Just took another loss of a yard or two. 
That time he was back about the 17 yard line. So it'll be third and 16 back at the 17. But the clock is running now. They'll do it one more time and this game will end. That clock is running. So one more time when they hit the deck, they don't have to come out anymore. That does it. This game will end now. That will have been the last play. Clock is down to 15 and they don't have to come out anymore. Georgia Bulldogs have defeated Florida by a score of 10 to 9. Georgia remains undefeated. They came into this game ranked number four. They are now 8-0-1. Time has run out. The game is over. Ball players coming onto the field. Jubilant Georgia ball players rejected Florida ball players. And 80,000 fans in the stands with mixed emotion. It has been the kind of a game that we've grown used to seeing in the Georgia-Florida game series over the years. Florida led for most of the ball game, but it was the Georgia defense early that rose to the occasion and kept Florida from taking a commanding lead. And then they came back, the Bulldogs did with the offense in the second half and scored the only touchdown of the day and won the football game. The several, several most valuable players of the game are, for Florida, Bobby Raymond. Bobby Raymond, their placement kicker, who had field goals of 22, 25, and 32 yards. And for Georgia, quarterback John Lestinger. He was 7 for 12 in the air, 55 yards, and one interception. And carrying the ball, he was 15 carries for 54 yards. Lestinger played most of the ball game at quarterback and was outstanding. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. So the final score here is Georgia 10 and Florida 9 in this annual game at the neutral site in Jacksonville, Florida. In 1876, Alexander Graham Bell started a communications revolution. Watson, come here. I want you. Watson, 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 Watson. Watson and Watson. Today, there's a new revolution from AT&T Information Systems. Glad you could join us, Mr. Watson. We still on for lunch, Watson? Goodbye for now, Watson. AT&T Information Systems. More than 2,000 years ago, before the age of the Caesars, vinifera grapes were first cultivated in Italy, and through the centuries, they have become the grapes that produce the very finest wines in the world. Today, these classic vinifera grapes give Riuniti a unique soft and light taste. Pure and natural Riuniti is the world's best-loved imported wine. After all, our roots go back 2,000 years. Saturday, they're dropping like flies. Anthony Andrews, Deborah Raffin, Pamela Bellwood, and Harry Morgan in Agatha Christie's sparkling cyanide. A ranger never takes the easy way out. You're reaching deep inside you for the things you never know. Go! That's why getting into the rangers is tough, and the training is tough. So it makes me feel like I'm part of something really special. All that you can be. And I'm not the only one. You can do it in the Army. Now be sure to stay with us for more scores and highlights from New York with Brent Nera. He'll bring us up to date on scores and highlights of uh, outstanding games played all around the country. And at this time of year, of course, there are so many games that are ultra important. And uh, also, you can have bonus coverage at the conclusion of that of the Notre Dame-Pittsburgh game, uh, whatever is remaining of that ball game, and uh, it is in progress. So you've still got a lot of football, and uh, going to get some comments from Jack Snow about this football game. Great ball game. It was, uh, you know, not a high-scoring affair, but you don't expect to have a high-scoring one from Georgia anyway because they're so much of a ground-control, conscientious-type team. But I was a little disappointed in Florida. You know, they've got a, a pretty good passing uh, situation, a good passing quarterback and receivers. They couldn't put the points on the board that they should have been able to do against the Bulldogs. So the Georgia Bulldogs have won eight last Monday, have tied one, and they were ranked number four coming in today.